Did I forget to unmute myself? Did I forget to un... There we go. That took a bit longer than expected. Okay. Uh, so this is the new Omni Smelter. Um, I haven't actually tested the train stops just yet. They're probably perfectly correct and nothing will go wrong. Uh, I am pretty pleased with this one. So we got rid of the giant sushi belt. Um, we don't have as many furnaces, but we are doing maximum speed modules with productivities in the furnace th uh, furnaces themselves. Hey, Evil Plum. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ad 10. Uh, also, um, Halen Shadow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, Rorosaur, good, and Costco Taquitos, good to see you all again, just came over from Dune's chat, yeah, I was watching Dune, he was, uh, he's got some crazy scale going on with his, uh, ships right now. Gek! Thank you very much for the sub. Three months, wow. Good to see you again. Where you been? I was on like three... Three nights ago seeing my first stream. This is the second one I've seen. Nice. Nice to have you back. How you doing, Gek? Did you get a little break from exams and stuff? Been doing uni stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. I like to cram all the tests in at once, right? June's a great scaler up. Yeah, it seems like it. Um, so what we've got here, I think, is probably going to be much easier for less experienced circuit users to understand. Um, there's some LTN stuff that might look a bit intimidating at first. I did realize that this station, we could actually reduce the number of combinators here because it's not a shared pickup. We don't need each divided by 24 output each and also S. Um, we can just set the control signal to steal and get rid of this combinator and this combinator. And then from this one, we can just do one time steal, so we can get rid of one combinator here as well. Gekaroni? Gekaroni. Um, but other than LTN and some displays, uh, what we've got up here is just that we are passing all of the input resources onto this red wire. Where is it? This red wire, which goes down to here, so that we can do certain things depending on what we've got, or rather not got, um, with our inputs. Oh, wait, I see trains. Yes, indeed. I need only 50 point before bonk. <laughs> oh, wow, that's savage. Um, I'll do that in a minute, okay. Yay, indeed. Thank- Thanks, Gek. Okay, so... Instead of doing a giant sushi belt, we've just- We're just splitting everything into half belts, and we actually have three chests for six inputs. <laughs> All right, I see how it is. Gek, how many points do you have left? He's Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
I have 37,000. All right, I might have to make some more expensive ones. We're going to have to start over, though. Maybe. With the explanation. Okay, so... Uh, apart from the LTN stuff, all that's happening up here is we're doing a bit of one-way wire to get all of the input resources onto this one red wire. Um... And that's going to come down here. If we're missing a resource, we're not going to do certain recipes. So everything down the bottom here is under a certain condition, output one of a type of res uh, recipe. And we just multiply that by negative one to get rid of it in our list of things that we're trying to smelt. So if we've got no vulcanite blocks, we can't do any of these uh, recipes. And if we're missing iron, we can't do iron plate, obviously, etc. On this side, we're doing something similar, but if we're getting too full on a resource, we stop. So if iron plate gets over 112k, um... That estimate turned out to be dangerously close to blocking the whole system, because this is where the iron plate stopped. Um, we've got 105... what the... Oh. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. So these are actually not full. Hmm. I did not foresee that one. Oh yeah, I guess it makes sense. So these chests are not quite full, but because of the balanced loading, um, we've actually got a bit of iron sticking out here. Excuse me a second. Okay, so that was not as disastrously close to filling up as I thought, but still pretty close. Anyway, once we're getting too full on one of the outputs, we say don't make iron plate anymore. Um, so all of this circuitry is just saying, under certain circumstances, do not smelt something. And then over here, this is the clever part. This is the part that one might struggle to understand a little bit if they're new to circuits. So we have a memory cell. It's got its output linked to its own input. And it just says each greater than zero output one of each. So it holds on to positive values. So when we receive a negative value from here, it gets rid of it. Um, and over here, Thank you for the follow, Hail and Shadow, and I am Vera. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Since I spammed, here is an update on me. Exams start tomorrow. Got three weeks with four exams and two projects. Fun. And there's the bunk. Thank you, Halen. Episodes? Only needs to do 19 more parts of space exploration before funny happens. Oh, I see. Okay, um, so these two combinators right here, we receive uh, all of the things that we're trying to smelt, plus one of each of these, which is every possible recipe from the constant combinator. And then we say for everything that is equal, uh, sorry, if everything is equal to one, then output one of everything. Uh, currently it's not doing that because it's receiving two steel, because we've got one of each recipe on the constant combinator, and one steel right here. So we're currently smelting steel. Um, steel is the only thing we're trying to smelt at the moment. But because 
one of these input signals is two, then it's not going to pass everything. Once we get full on steel, um, we're going to lose that uh, steel signal because steel is going to be greater than 112k. We're going to output one steel here, multiply it by negative one. It's going to come to our memory cell and steel one is going to become steel zero. And it's not going to output anything because the output condition is each has to be greater than zero. So one tick later, it's going to drop down to like steel is negative one for the inputs over here, but that's fine. So once there's nothing on this green wire right here, this little circuit is going to trip and it's going to say, try to smelt everything, please. And it's only going to be cancelled out by all of these saying, no, 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 don't smelt anything, actually. Did double bonk? Yes, indeed. Go watch the best Factorio player. Wait, I already am. Oh, thank you. Um, so, apart from this little bit of magic right here, I think this is uh, about as simple as it gets, really. We've effectively got some latch conditions, but we don't need to build a latch for every single resource. All we do is try to smelt everything, and then under certain con uh, conditions say, no, 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 we can't smelt that right now. And I've kind of accidentally designed this really well for... Uh, for updating it to use central planning as well, which is something I've been wanting to implement with the Omni Smelters. So, all I think all we would have to do is get rid of this, and then in some central location we've got a brain that just spits out uh, what we want to try to smelt right now. And then I realized Oh, there's going to be a problem with that. Let's say this local place only has stone and no other input resources, but central command is saying, please smelt steel. We can't do that. But what we could do, because of this checkbox right here on crafting combinator, keep crafting until zero. If you feed a crafting combinator iron plate and then steel, and then, I don't know, copper plate. It's going to be smelting the iron plate, no matter what order those signals would normally arrive in, um, until you get rid of that. So what you could do is at central command, whenever you change um, what you're trying to tell all of the Omni smelters to do, you just, uh, for at least for just a moment, turn off the inputs and then add the highest priority input and then the second highest priority input. What the? Okay. Uh, turn on the highest priority input, uh, second high, or rather product that you're trying to make, second highest priority, third pri highest priority. As long as you just control the timing of that circuit, it's effectively going to say, you're allowed to smelt everything, but here's your highest priority. I'm pretty familiar with circuit networks, but I've never really found a use for constant combinators. Oh, there's a lot of uses for constant combinators. All right, Gek, take care. Thanks for dropping by. Good to see you again. Hope your study goes well. Now, as for the circuitry at the smelters themselves, um, that's also much simpler than our last design and just as effective. So basically what we're doing here is we've got our three different belts of inputs, half a belt for each resource, and uh, it's a little bit compacted, obviously, but all we're doing here three times is saying 
a filter inserter and it's set to uh, set filters blacklist. So it'll pick up, oh, it's um, also got stack size of one. Well, actually, no, it doesn't because we don't have to be that precise with how many things we're putting in here. But um, we set filters blacklist and then it's not going to pick up more of whichever resource unless and until we say, actually, you can pick up an extra hundred of these. And it'll keep going until it's got a hundred iron plate. Maybe I shouldn't have picked such a large number. Let's say 50. And there it goes. So you can limit multiple items as long as it's uh, five items or less because of the filters. Um, we can limit... Uh, two resources to a chest and each get half a chest. Um, because the filter inserters maximum stack size is three, we say uh, 11,197 uh, additional items are allowed instead of like 1,200 or 1,199, I guess. Um, we're only going to pick up a little bit of Vulcanite, so I actually just left that at zero but I left it on the constant combinator just to illustrate that that's what goes in this chest here. Um, stone and iron plate go in this chest and iron and copper go in this chest. In the case of Vulcanite, um, we're only picking up one a little bit because the furnace will end up holding on to, oh, we're doing steel right now. The furnace will end up holding onto like 144 vulcanite anyway. And then when we swap to a recipe like steel that doesn't use uh, vulcanite blocks, it all gets chucked out into this chest by the uh, crafting combinator. So we don't want, we, we want to leave a bit more room in this chest than the other ones. Um, and then this inserter right here is as simple as it gets. It's literally just a whitelist with five items on it. Uh, that goes to the output. So when we change recipes, the products here as well also get dumped into this chest. Um, if it was backed up, which it actually doesn't get backed up. Um, we set up the belts a lot better this time. So, say we're smelting uh, copper. Oh, hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Factorio, while listening to your stream right now, lol. Yeah, that's a pretty normal way to do it, I think. I do that all the time. Um, Bonk. Costco Taquitos. Thank you for the bonk. Um, okay, so when this switches recipe, the way crafting combinators work, sometimes it'll dump a bunch of input and output stuff into this chest. That's why this chest has iron and copper and stone in it. Um, but if there are any finished products that end up in this chest, um, they get delivered to the output belt via this uh, filter inserter. I mean, technically you do. This is, this is true. Well played. Um, now, I think for iron and copper, the half a belt is actually fast enough, but uh, maybe not for steel. Let's check. Probably is fast enough for steel. That looks like we ended up with an extra stack of stone somehow. Did I do this wrong? 1.1k stone, or 1.2, and... Hmm. Curious. That is 2.4... Oh. 
I'm misreading it somehow. Oh, because this is... Yeah, okay, that's correct. That's 2.4k iron plate and 1.2k stone. Okay, perfect. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Uh, so yeah, the circuitry surrounding the inputs is definitely a lot simpler than the last one. Um, don't know if there's anything more to say about it. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the input belts. Um, so sand absolutely cannot keep up. The half a belt for sand will in no way keep up with glass. However, by the time we decide that we want to make glass, hopefully we have half a chest full of sand, and that's actually going to make uh, quite a lot of glass. So we should be finished. Um, let's see. If we're doing regular the regular glass recipe without vulcanite blocks, it's four sand um, for one glass plus productivity 40%. So uh, four becomes uh, 1.4. Uh, so 2.86. We've got 2.4 thousand sand. Uh, let's see. 2400 divided by 4 times 1.4 is 840 glass times... Can I really not... Okay, there we go. Uh, times 36 smelters. We can make 30,240 glass before it's going to slow down. And that that would be if the inserters were not putting more sand in the chest while that smelting was happening. A baker's torch. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What is this area you're building in? A template world? Yeah, it's... Uh, there's a mod called um, Editor Extensions, and if you have that installed and go to a new game, um, it'll create this lab world for you. Making a huge base, meanwhile I'm just trying to get electric furnaces. Got to start somewhere. That's so cool. Thank you. Um, it was a little bit tricky getting full throughput from the output belts for iron and copper. And we actually needed to use uh, three to two balances here, which look really weird. Trying to optimize fluids right now. That can be tricky. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, I think that's about all there is to explain for this one. Um, it really is simplified, and it's far more reliable. Oh, there is one more thing I can simplify. Let's change this. So, as I said before, because we're only doing steel with this circuit, we don't need as many combinators. Um, I'll just lay it out up here in a way that's a bit more easy to read. So what we're doing is, from the train, we read the contents, we say each times negative one. And then we read the signal from the LTN, the yellow combinator. Um, that'll tell us what the train is asking for. So on the wire, we implicitly do addition and subtraction for that one. We no longer need two combinators over here to filter out just the signal we want. We just say steel times one, output steel, and then these five combinators can be three. Instead of uh, each divided by 24, output each, 
and then remainder 24. Each, and this one is S. And then we have something similar over here, except it's four. So these two divide everything, uh, the remaining steel that we're trying to put into the train by 24, which is the number of inserters. Then we get the remainder of that, and these two divide by the number of cargo wagons. And that just links up to uh, one inserter for each cargo wagon. Because we're only going to do steel, we don't need to do this. So that's going to be like so. Oh, that's not quite right. Like so. And then like so. Like so. Like so. And this will go to every inserter, and this will go to just four of them. Also trying to get a train that can travel further and get more resources. I feel like in the game with no mods there should be pipe splitters. Like how there is a conveyor splitter. You could do some pumps and connect some circuit wire to them. You will need a container that you can read the contents of, like a storage tank. So it's going to be a bit chunky. Fluid split on their own, no need for that. Well, you might want to do like a priority split or something, right? So this one right here is just going to be steel times one. And then we get the red wire for input. This one goes here. These are all connected correctly. We don't need this one, and we don't need this one. That red wire goes there, and then uh, this wire goes here. And then we rotate this around. That's a pretty good fit. Could I maybe make this a bit more snug? That doesn't look very good. I feel like I'm going to be unhappy with the placement of this particular combinator, no matter where it goes. Yeah, let's just leave it there. So, remaining steel that we need to put in the train. Um, and, yeah, we can't reduce this anymore because... This red wire, we need to filter out just steel from that. Uh, steel times 1, output steel. Divide by 24, output each. Remainder, divide by 4, each. That should do it. So let's update this blueprint. And then look into dropping it into our game. New contents. Uh, don't need that stuff. SpaceX, there we go. Select new contents. Fantastic. No trains, no train fuel, I don't think there's any special items except for the infinity cargo wagons, and that should be it. It really does take a while to make steel, I mean it's five times slower than the regular iron recipe which is only about 100 per second. I think we're doing like 20 steel per second from here. Look at all of the belts that we need to support iron and copper at full speed. Four blue belts. And 
up here for steel. We've just got this sad little yellow uh, red belt with yellow inserters that's easily keeping up. I think I know what you mean. We need to use fluid tanks and combinators to split evenly. I have a blueprint for train loading and unloading. Yes, indeed. All right, let's jump back into the regular game, shall we? Bonk. Bonk. Oh, uh, before we do, I should show you the... Uh, the new loaders that I came up with. Much better to demonstrate them here. Um, that one probably doesn't work. Oh, that's that one. Okay. This is a smaller version of, I think, these ones up here. It's actually a combinatorless balanced unloader. Assuming that, you know, your trains are full when they come in, so that each set of six chests gets the same number of items, um, having something like this will actually keep everything evenly loaded. Although the individual chests in each set um, under some of these designs will be allowed to be imbalanced. You're taking like red belts, the garbage, meanwhile, they're amazing to me, and the blue belts are like gods to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was really more comparing the fact that uh, if we're making iron plate here with the vulcanite blocks, um, it's something like 160 iron plate per second. It's almost enough to saturate four blue belts. The 24 stack inserters with balanced loading actually struggle a little bit to pick them up. Um, to the point where I actually went to the trouble of setting the ones at the end of each belt to not have the balanced loader condition. So that takes four belts. Uh, these two take two belts pretty comfortably. But steel... Steel just has this one little belt coming all the way up here. And it doesn't even need to be blue. In fact, it's less than half of a blue belt. Look at those yellow inserters go. Fantastic. Okay, so actually I wonder if... I wonder if that's going to be a problem in our game where we've only got a stack size of two. I think, I, I, I think it's going to be fine. Oh, the steel is accumulating. No, I think we're okay. Yeah, we're fine. Alright, do not override stack size. Anyway, um, a quick demo of the new balanced unloaders. This one doesn't use a combinator. Um, all of this green wire, uh, every single stack inserter here and this bit of belt is on read contents hold. And the enabled condition for all of these is just everything equals zero. Very simple, gets the job done. And it just six of these almost saturates a blue belt, kind of. Two of them very easily saturates it. Um, we've got a few examples of the same thing, but with a different layout up here. That is nothing to do with the balanced unloader. This is just for testing purposes. Um, we wait until all of these chests are completely empty, and then we completely fill them again. Um, so that is just a latch. It says, if iron plate equals zero, output iron plate. If iron plate equals the absolute maximum, uh, output red signal, and if iron 
this is a memory cell. If iron plate is greater than red signal, output one iron plate. So it keeps the iron plate signal. I use four inserters for unloading. That's valid. Uh, here we've got another version of this design. You can clearly see it. This layout with no combinator for balanced unloading. Um, it manages 90 iron plate per second very easily. Which is good because this is the usual unloading configuration that I use at my train stations. Um, because I like them to be fairly compact. Uh, this is just the right version, or left right. Um, what is this one? This one is a regular old uh, circuit based balanced unloader. And this one is the same mirrored. Okay. So back down this way, we've got a bit of a twist on the usual balanced unloader. We let all of these inserters go as fast as they like, but the belts are where we say um, enable, disable, depending on the average. So just like we normally do with every single ins uh, inserter, we read the contents of the chest, in this case six chests, on the red wire. We get the negative average um, from a arithmetic combinator. And just to sort of add a bit of slack, I instead of making this greater than or equal to zero, I made it greater than or equal to negative 72, so it can get a little bit ahead of the pack. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't really help that much once things do get imbalanced. So now they've all stopped. Um, it's gotten imbalanced enough for these things to stop entirely. This one will get very close to a full throughput of four blue belts, but you'll see these gaps diminish over time. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, over the next like minute or two, the gaps are going to get smaller and less frequent. And what you end up with is just like one little gap, just like this, occasionally. So it's not quite, once it gets imbalanced, it's not quite going to be full throughput. However, it does almost do four blue belts of throughput with the minimums of space and only one combinator. Uh, the next one is where I thought, well, what if I did that, but with latches? So each one of these just says, um, uh, we're doing the same thing, but at this bit of belt, uh, if this, if, if we drop below, if we drop significantly below the average of the four sets of chests, red signal, so stop the belt, um, if we are above average, green signal, so start the belt again. And this is just uh, your typical textbook latch, uh, green greater than red, output one green, and it has its input linked to its output. So if you give it a green signal and then turn it, all of the inputs off, um, it'll hold on to that green signal. It'll go around in circles. So this one, if you, okay, it's kind of hard to see at the moment because some of these uh, chests are a bit empty. So we'll refill that one for now. And as soon as it's full, we'll know that everything's balanced. Cool. So I'll turn this off. And then we're going to break it. So this is now imbalanced. Once this has a difference of like 72 items, which is 12 times 6, by the way, the maximum amount that you could get from a stack from each of these inserters. Now it switches off. We let this go ahead. 
And then once these ones drop below the average again, they're allowed to go. So that is a perfectly balanced, perfect, well, perfect, it's perfectly balanced plus or minus a few items, which it, you know, it deliberately keeps it in a specific range. Um, the downside here is, again, the stack inserters will basically just go nuts and empty whichever chests they like in whatever order within this set. What you could do to address that, if you really want to, is have another row of chests. And... Uh, do a balanced load when you take from the train. And if it's getting full enough, that will uh, help a little bit. Um, but I don't really think that's necessary. It's not that bad of a thing if you start getting less throughput when you're running out of resources. Just give it more resources. The only other downside there, though, is that if you end up with, like, the middle chest or chests uh, completely full, um, it's going to take a little bit longer to unload the train because this inserter right here is not going to be doing anything sometimes. Uh, so now that is actually that. Um, this is, like... Oh, that's right. I added a circuit here to deliberately mess up the balance just to just to show that it's working. So every five seconds, this thing shuts off for a moment. And this thing has to rebalance. And then you can see it gets straight back to full throughput. Your build is absolutely insanity. I'm loving every minute of this ADHD-induced nightmare I'm experiencing. Six to one is too weird for me. Six to one. Oh, well, it's just the most inserters you can fit. And it's a little bit more than enough to... I think you need maximum stack size and four stack inserters to, to get a full belt of throughput, right? Um, this will give you that full throughput before you have the stack size of 12, which is going to take a while in SpaceX. Um, but also you've got, you've got room for seven train loads of resources here. Um, so yeah, how can we improve on this? Well, we can reduce the number of combinators, which is not what I did on this iteration, all I did was the exact same circuit, but tucked it in here a little bit more, made it a bit neater. But I actually, I actually did figure out a way to reduce the number of combinators. Is there any way to measure belt throughput with combinators in vanilla? Yes. Uh, I did not design this circuit. I actually still haven't completely uh, figured out how it works. Is this it? No, that's mine. This is it. Okay, this thing right here. Let's see if I can figure it out this time. Um, we're reading hand contents pulse from this inserter. We could do the same thing with a belt. Just like this. Read belt contents pulse. And uh, what this circuit does is measures how many items go through here within a certain time period. I think this is the output right here. Um, so signal I is one. That must be like the number of ticks. This is a timer, definitely. A signal T is 3.6K. I think that's, um, this is 10 seconds. This is a minute, isn't it? 3600 over 60, yeah, um, so this is per minute, how many times is this iron plate going through this belt, 
and it is 96. Oh, sorry, 56. Yeah, that looks about right. It, just eyeballing it, it looks a bit slower than one second. I mean, it's very close to one second, actually. Uh, I just finished a research, and it let off the noise and scared me. <laughs> It can be a bit louder than other sounds. Um, so, so we got this constant combinator. This tells us, well, I, for some reason, is our timer. I would normally make that T. Um, if I is smaller than T, output I input count. So that's our standard timer. Just like over here, I've got T1 coming from our uh, constant combinator. And if t is less than 300, output t. So every 300 ticks, this thing resets. The only difference there is we've got a couple of constants that we can change on the constant combinator. So we've got a timer. It resets every minute. And then from there, we say if i is equal to t, output r for reset. So... Yeah, we could have just said something like if i equals 1 or if i equals 0 here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so once per minute we output r for reset. We also take the timer signal and feed it to this. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think these things happen one tick apart. So... If i is equal to t, output r for reset. If r for reset, uh, output everything input count. And it's also receiving... You can see on this green wire right here, pointing at the medium pole, um, that the counter... This is the counter right here, um, which keeps getting reset. So currently we're at 42 iron plate. Um, so every minute we reset this counter. And I think one tick later we pass everything through this combinator. If i equals 0, output everything input count. Why is why has it got a negative number for the iron plate here? Uh because we're receiving a negative from this thing. Where does this get its input from? From this one. And this is a memory cell as well. Okay, so pass everything through and it goes to here and multiply by negative one. This is receiving, this is getting tricky. Uh, so over here we've got just an unconditional memory cell. Um, we could put just about anything here. If fish equals zero, output everything. Uh, input count. So when i equals zero, this passes everything to the memory cell. So if r equals 0, if i equals t, output r1, maybe we could reduce this by a combinator. We could just have if i equals t, output everything, but there'd probably be some like signal contamination if we try to do that. Um, yeah, I think there would be. So this is also reading i from our clock over here. When i is equal 0, and this one is i equals t, which is 36k, which is our maximum. So I think these two things happen one tick apart. We reset this, and... And we pass everything through from here. How is this negative, though? We're constantly passing this one. Oh, because it's... So it's getting the negative of last time. 
the the total like per minute that we got from last time it's multiplying that by negative one and this thing is receiving both the number of items that have passed through here in the last minute and a negative of the total per minute that we got last time I'm not sure why that's useful. Where does it go? It goes to... Oh, I see. Because it's... Yeah, because it has to compare the total from the last minute to the total from... from the current minute. And when i equals zero, this passes through the delta so this is going to be zero, because we keep getting the exact same iron per sec. Damn, that's clever. That's just a lot of things happening all at once that you have to string together and try and sort of mentally keep track of. Pretty tricky. I, I don't think... I, I think it will be at least a day until I could build this from scratch, just from, uh, like, just from memory, or figuring it out, or something. So yeah, uh, that is a way that you can measure, like, items per minute, or per second, or something, going through a belt, uh, in vanilla. So, BRB, by all means. Um, but you can see quite clearly when you've got through uh, full throughput on a belt. If it's completely saturated and it's not stopping at all, it's pretty easy to tell. A uh, bold viking. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I almost said blob viking which uh, tripped me up there. Yeah, so I actually did manage to reduce the Combinator count for this. Um, I used that same trick that we did, uh, that we used with the oil to do a two Combinator um, latch effectively, asterisk, conditions apply. Um, so what we do here is uh, if everything greater than zero, that means we've got the above average amount in this set of six chests compared to the other sets. Uh, if everything is greater than zero, output one iron plate times 72. That's going to be our, like, wiggle room. That's going to be our less precise condition for whether this turns on and off. Um, so we're pretending we've got an extra 72 iron plate here until uh, the case, until it is the case that that we're not above average. So once, we're, once we have an above average amount here, we pretend we've got even more. And if we are below average, I'm confusing myself. Uh, we switch this off. So this is h divided by negative 4 output h. And we're reading how much we've got. So 0 is average. Everything greater than 0. If we are above average, output iron plate times 72. And then feed that to here. So that creates a loop. So we hold on to 72 iron plate. An imaginary 72 iron plate is in this uh, set of steel chests, so we're still above average. Yeah, so we just continue. If we're greater than or equal to the average, we want this to be switched on. So that just means that if some other belt stops or slows down, um, it's going to affect the other ones, basically. And once we've got this down to just two combinators for each set, we can snuggle them in right here. 
and it turns out we can actually make the wiring look quite a bit cleaner with that. Having a rest today yourself? Yeah, uh, just had to do an early work shift before stream, but other than that I'm vibing. I've only got a few days of work this week, so not too bad. Um, but yeah, that is it. That is how we get uh, balanced unloading in the most compact unloader from a train step, uh, train stop, and also have uh, maximum throughput. Let's uh, fill these chests again, shall we? And back. Welcome back. All right, are we full? We're full. So we know all of this is balanced. So if I stop that, after a little while, all of these stop. Oh yeah, and there was this uh, surprising behavior where you can actually get sort of a... Let me give this a red belt right here, and we'll turn this off for now. It actually does do a sort of interesting behavior with, instead of just turning on and off in a sort of jarring way, it, it creates kind of a smooth output. It should kick in pretty soon. There it is. Do you do programming work as well? Uh, no. I did train as a programmer a long time ago, but uh, for various reasons I didn't end up following through with it. So the only... this is quite literally almost the perfect uh, balanced unloader. The only downside here is we do end up with the individual chests having... Uh, some of them drain more quickly than others, but the sets of chests uh, will be balanced. Now if only there was blue wire we could probably do both. Um, it would take more combinators though. Well, it would only take one more combinator, actually, I think. Yeah, one more combinator. Although it might slow things down again because the whole prob the whole reason we're doing this is the uh, the regular old balanced unloader where um, where we have each individual stack inserter deciding uh, activating and deactivating um, that doesn't actually doesn't actually reach full throughput with four belts no matter how much I've tried. I feel like it should be possible because if you have a stack size of five and you have 24 stack inserters, um, it just barely doesn't saturate the blue belts. And the stack size can go up to 12. So you would think with just the right clever manipulation of stack sizes and uh, maybe coordinating the inserters with each other, not just checking what they've got in each chest. Um, you should be able to get full throughput and keep it all perfectly balanced. But I don't have any ideas on exactly how to do that at this stage. I am pretty happy with this design though. All right, let's jump into our game, shall we? It's gonna take a moment to load. I get that, I have two different degrees, but ended up working with something completely unrelated. Yeah, that's fine.
Alright, so what do we got? We have nuclear power is functional. I think I did fix all of the supply issues for the uranium fuel cells. Looks like it. Um, we fixed this station as well. There's going to be a lot of jobs for the bots and the trash train though. I joined like an hour ago at the start of the stream, but I still have no idea what's happening. Factorio. Factorio is happening. What a beautiful world. Yeah, I like the... Um, I like the different biomes that space exploration comes with. Yeah, actually. Yes, indeed. Um, I don't know what we're doing right now. I do have... I kind of want to replace these smelters at some point, but... It's... To remove the items that are in the chests is going to be an insane amount of work. Um, I don't really want to do... I, I, I literally could find myself just nuking it in order to remove it faster. Besides, look amazing what do the new biomes do uh i don't think they have any sort of anything beyond an aesthetic uh look although the different planets um let's see the different planets actually have like different biomes and aesthetics and what kind of resources you get from them and that sort of thing what do we got here We got a lot of vulcanite. This is really making the machine chug. Let me just put performance mode back on. Your builds give oath of the duplicity between man and machine. Uh, good, I think. Looks like there's no biters on this world. Um, but yeah. The next thing I wanted to do was go back to space and build a better space base. How about we use this one right here? Is this one still full of coal? It is. Nothing but coal, actually. Can we fit that? We can. Oh, we didn't launch it yet. Alright, let's go. Um, yeah, I think all of the launch settings are manual. Uh, Nervous Orbit, Coal and Water. Off you go. And I'm going to turn off our requests for cargo over here. Whoa, small brain just got confused. I don't know what's happening. Uh, anything more specific? Purple Snow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And there is our coal. And ice. Oh, and this is already backed up, actually. So that's going to keep oil going up here for a long time. Fantastic. Let's configure this one for... A scaffold. I think this stacks to a hundred, right? Um, so we could do 50,000. That might be a bit excessive, but on the other hand... So we got 500 storage slots times a hundred. That is 50,000. Bots are bringing... Oh no. Uh, the bots are trying to bring 5,000 times 10. Yeah, the bots are trying to bring all of the space platform simultaneously. Luckily, there's only so much to deliver. The entirety of the mod pack, I assume? Planets? Oh yeah, that's space exploration. 
Space exploration adds a lot of stuff. Um, you'll start on a planet that mostly is going to remind you of like just a regular game, except by default the resources are considerably more scarce. I wish I had been aware of that to start with. Um, however, you do end up getting uh, ways to get infinite resources. However, that comes with its own challenges. Um, it is very, very power hungry to do the core mining. Um, I can't remember if the circuit changes that we made over here ended up being good enough that I want to patch them to everything else. I guess it couldn't hurt to try. Pr probably. We just need these three combinators. Alright, let, let's give it a go, shall we? Copy this over here. I'm pretty sure that's the same. This goes over here. Uh, that red wire goes there. This green wire goes here. And that red wire goes all the way over here. So now... Well, we just ran out of space platform. Exactly when that would have been implemented, but you can see here we're only requesting 10 items per chest at a time, instead of hundreds or thousands. Alright, so we're going to have to speed up our production of uh, space scaffolding. Apparently, Apparently it's not getting automated at the moment. So we definitely need to go faster than zero. Steel plate, LDS, and heat shielding. I really, really wish I had put heat shielding on the main bus. There isn't room to make that happen anymore. Um, steel, LDS, and heat shielding. We could do... We could do it from a train station. That is probably the way to go. How is our steel doing? Fantastic. 83,000. And if we have 83,000 steel, we're definitely not struggling on iron plate. Looks like all of our re uh, input resources are looking good. I should probably remove this and make a train drop off for glass as well. But for now, I just want to uh, find somewhere to make a lot of... Why don't we do it here? Uh, find somewhere we can make lots of... One, two, three, four, five, six... That's okay. Uh, space scaffolding. Can we use productivity modules? We cannot. So we may as well use speeds, like we were doing. We may as well beacon it. And let's see how fast this would go. Uh, only 2.1 per second. Okay, we really need to beacon this. Here I thought it would be so fast that we might just take directly from the train. Oh, that's not good. Uh, why don't we move you over a little bit? And that goes there. There is a ton of stuff after launching a rocket. In this mod? Absolutely. The late game of vanilla kind of becomes the mid game of this mod. Unless your usual late game is like mega bases. 
and then it would be like mid to late game. Oh, we probably didn't have power here when I tested this. No, we did. 4.2 per second. That's not very good. Considering we need 50,000... Um, yeah, that's going to take three and a half hours. Maybe we could do a bit more than that. We don't really need this space right here. I want to be careful I don't disconnect things. So I guess we're going to build a lot of these. Hold on. How many? Let, let's aim for one blue belt, shall we? So it would be more than ten times this. Let's maybe not aim for a blue belt. In fact, there's no reason to ratio it for a belt, because we're giving it to the bots. Um, so we might just, what's the most compact way to do this with bots? Well, actually, no, I want belt inputs, but we'll use bots for output. So it's just going to be like, so, and this whole thing is super slow. So yellow inserters will be fine here. Um, consumption is also very slow. Uh, 1.5, less than two, considerably less than two items per second. But I'll probably use fast inserters just because blue belts. Okay. Um, if I do it like this... I don't know where I'm going to fit RoboPods. I guess I'll just not worry about cramming them in uh, too precisely. We're going to need... Hmm. We're going to need double belts. Unless we want to do some weird sushi thing or something, which is not out of the question. Oh, there's LDS coming from the bus over here as well. I think I'll leave that in the main base. Um, I don't think... If I wasn't doing... Actually, that... Is I want to do something new and weird and different here. We're going to do... Um, uh, we're going to do three different item types coming from the same station, possibly. So I'll set the requests for LTN to be just like one train load for each train. Considering we can fit seven train loads here, and it might drop down to like uh, 0 0.9 train loads of something, and it'll bring a whole train load. But that'll all be fine. Um, so it's LDS. Uh, what is that stack to? 50? So 8,000. Uh, I think it was steel. And heat shielding, right? I think that stacks to 100 as well. Let's just double check that. Uh, heat shielding only stacks to 50, actually. And we've got the maximum amount. Fantastic. As for LDS, not as many, but we've got a few train loads. That also stacks to 50, and 
we do indeed need heat shield, LDS, and steel plate. Um, so this is 8,000. I kind of want to put them in the same order. Heat shielding, LDS, and steel plate. Now how is this actually going to work? The inserters need to know how many of each resource we've got in some common area. So I guess we could do a sushi belt. I need to get rid of this belt. Get it out of the way, that is. Um, that should be fine. Okay. In that case, we could do this on this side. Let's double check all of this is powered. Seems good. Okay. I guess I'll just set these to... Oh wait, I need three filters. Or I could just read what the train is dropping off and set the filters that way. But then, if a train was somehow scheduled here to deliver the wrong thing, that wouldn't accomplish anything. Well, let's just use regular stack inserters this time. What could go wrong? Actually, something could go wrong. Someday, somehow. Alright, so set filters. And then copy paste like so. Now, over here, I think we'll do some sushi belt. We technically could put this a bit closer, but I'm not going to worry about that, I think. Actually, maybe. That goes there, and so on. I need to know uh, how much, what the rate is going to be from this. And that has used up a lot of speed modules. There'll be a few more delivered to me in a moment. Oh, I've still got 40 here. Okay, is all of that powered? Yes. 25... 50, 75 items per second is less than two blue belts. Um, I might have to separate these a little bit more. So, what if we had... Double belt sushi. That's going to be a bit strange when it comes back to where it came from, I guess. there. This one goes here. Uh, 
and then I guess we could just put it straight onto this. Although it's only going to put it on one side, we could probably do better. Um, should we start with the usual two belt unloader? At least the belt part of it. Maybe. There will be not quite enough room. Unfortunate. And that's going to be a few bot jobs. But what are you going to do? Let's put some undergrounds over here. And like so. Oh, that's slightly annoying. That's fine, I guess. Okay. So this needs to come all the way over here. And then we need to merge this. Um, that will be output priority left. Input priority right. And then we'll do the same thing over here somewhere. It's actually simpler than I thought it would be. So that part goes here. Input priority right on these ones. And then uh, output priority right here. Maybe move this back one more time. And then our filter inserters need to know what's on this belt. So we'll put a uh, counting machine. I don't think we're going to need a condition on it, but a decide accommodator keeps those options open. Um, if R for reset equals zero, output everything input count. So then if we mess up, we can um, we can feed it uh, an R signal to get rid of it. I don't suppose there's some clever way to to make it without adding combinators, make it so that the things that we want to put more of on the belt are going to be greater than zero. No, if anything, it's going to be backward. I could have... I could have the filter inserters that are putting stuff onto the belt um, count negative, and we could have stuff taking off of the belt count as positive, and then... If we're if we're greater than zero, we'll put something on the belt, and then we just have to offset the count by like I don't know what it's going to be like five hundred or something for each resource. How much belt is here? Let's just assume 
392 times 8 is going to be a decent approximation and leave a bit of a gap. 3,000 items. So we could do 1,000 items for each. Okay, so we need to pulse that onto our memory cell. Uh, constant combinator, and then a pulse generator. Um, this thing will only work for positive values. You have to change it a bit to make it work with negative. We have our signals on a constant combinator, for example. Uh, heat shield, 1000. LDS. 1000 and steel 1000 bonk welcome back Gek. so you give both of these and uh, combinators a signal at the same time this one says greater than zero output each um, and this one multiplies by negative one it takes one tick for a combinator to do its thing so one tick after you pass this through here, it's outputting positive, and one tick after that, this combinator here is also receiving uh, exactly the negative of what's in this constant combinator. So then it goes down to zero, so the output only comes out of here for one tick. Um, so we connect that down here, turn it on, turn it off and our memory cell is holding on to 1000 of each resource um, I may have done that wrong I think we want it to be negative a thousand don't we so we want the exact opposite of what we just did um, instead of a regular pulse generator. I was actually messing with this while making the... Uh, uh, playing with some ideas for making the... the new Omni Smelter. I think all I have to do is change this to less than zero. And then it'll only accept... it'll only work for negative inputs. So negative 1000 steel negative 1000 LDS, negative 1000 heat shield. I bonked once and now I've been bonking every now and then. Yes indeed. All right, so that just outputted for a tick. Let's program that into our uh, memory cell, negative 1000 for each of those resources. And then... I think I messed up, actually. Yeah, I, I, I like, double plus reverse Uno played myself. I think it does have to be positive 1000. Whoops. Let's build the whole thing and then we'll figure out what we need. So what we're going to do is count negative t uh, negative one times everything that the filter inserters put onto the sushi belt. Um, so we're going to have set filters, read hand contents, pulse. And that's going to be the same for all of them. And we're going to multiply... Wait up. If I'm using green wire for this... And then this one's on green wire... I think we'll just have to make that part red wire. Okay. Each times negative one output each. 
and it also... Well, no, this is the problem. I think we need both red and green wire for this. So... Um... So on the green wire, we're outputting to this negative one times. On the red wire, we're going to be receiving from our counting machine. Thanks for the bunk. I am Vera. Alright, so this goes here, and the yay, and then I think that is all the combinators nope. we need, because these ones are just going to be read hand contents pulse, no condition, we don't need a arithmetic combinator to, to change this from positive to negative. We do need to link all of these, however. And up here. And then pass all of that into our counting machine. Whoops. Gek, can you do 10 bonk real fast for me? Uh-oh. Verza, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so... I may have got that backwards. Zabster, thank you for the bonk. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh boy, here it comes. Um, so which one of these is going to be negative one? I think it actually is going to be these ones. Uh, it, yeah, it's going to be the normal way to set up um, accounting system for a sushi belt, except that we have to start at like negative a thousand because the count has to be, the maximum count has to be slightly above, uh, zero. Each times negative one output each. Uh, in that case, I think we don't need this ugly red wire. I could be wrong. Can we just get rid of that? And then act like so. And then this just connects like this. So we're reading a positive number when we put something onto the belt, a negative number when we take something off of it, but we need to start at negative a thousand because we need to set the filters. No, they need to be positive. Oh my goodness. I keep playing myself trying to figure out how this will work. With the link SMH. Bonk top bonk. Okay. How do we make it so the count will be just over zero when we want the filter inserters to stop? No, that is correct. Okay, okay. So... Pulse generator. Turn this off. Steel 1000. Or oh, negative 1000. Yep. 
yeah, this is this is good actually. Uh, LDS, and we need this to say less than zero to work with negatives. So now we've got a count of negative a thousand for each of these. And when we put one LDS onto this, it'll go to negative 999. We keep going, we get up to just above zero, and we set filters blacklist on our filter inserters, is how that works. Cool, let's see if it works. Um, we need LTN to know what's in the stop, and we also feed it a negative number for the stuff we're asking for, and that should be it. Oh, have we connected all of these? I th think we have. Um... Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, here comes our train. Permit? Who needs a permit? Bonk.com is not allowed by mods? Yes, and it never will. It never will be. Okay, uh... That seems pretty good. May as well make these green chests. Whoops. See, it's illegal. Yes. Um, scaffolding. 4800. And this one. All right, where's our train? Is this it? Why is it picking up 7.7 thousand steel? Where is it going? Something is wrong here. Request stack threshold is 160. Oh, I forgot to, oh no. Okay. Um, we need train... Right, let's turn this off for a second. Uh, train size. One train at a time. Request stack threshold is 160. And then why... Why are we not... What? guess. I, I thought this thing would spit out a signal of what the train was bringing. I guess not. Alright, let's just read the train contents, shall we? Um, like so. There we go. And we should see LDS stop as soon as we hit a thousand, and plus a little bit more. Fantastic. And there's probably a steel st uh, steel train stuck right about here. Wait, is this it? No? What's going on with all these trains? Got a little traffic jam issue. What are you doing? Oh, I think I know. Is this... Oh, it's just because the trash train is busy. And this train right here is waiting for its chance to go down this way. Um, why don't you park somewhere where you're not blocking three trains? And then this train is not the one I was looking for. Uh, there should be a steel train 
going to pick up a not multiple of four steel, and it's going to get itself stuck. Unless it picked up exactly a multiple of four and came here. That could have happened. Everything with .com is illegal? Uh, yes. Um... Okay, I was going to say this belt is looking a bit full. I could have sworn we calculated we could fit 3,000 items on these belts. 392 times 8 is over 3,000. And we limited... At the inserters, we limited it to... Oh, we've got three types of items. Hey, it's working! The steel did arrive. Hey, Baker Staunch. Thank you very much for the gifted sub to Streamlabs. Enjoy it, Streamlabs. <laughs> uh, much appreciated. Again, thank you, Baker. Very humbling and motivating, as always. Um, I may... No, we're fine. I was going to say I may have gone overboard with how much stuff we're putting on the belt here, but... Um... Well, yes. Yes, I did, actually. Okay, we can patch this. We just have to... We just have to pulse in. Um, like... Well, 500 would definitely do it. Let's just start with 500. We'll half the amount of stuff we're allowed on the belt. Because the rate of consumption here... is actually kind of high. 75, which is not that much less than 90. Okay, let's reduce the amount of stuff uh, for each item. We'll reduce it by 1,000. That is steel. I mean, a 100, not a 1,000. So we actually put in a positive number to do this. switched off, right? Yeah. And pulse that in. So that's going to create another 300 vacant slots on the belt. Hog Streamlab sub. Yes, indeed. Just chillin', watching him play Factorio while I have Factorio running in the background researching stuff, as you do. Okay, are all of these machines actually working at full speed? Not just yet. We're not using... We, we need a lane balancer. And I think I know where I would like to fit it. Actually... No, this is good. Okay, can we actually, like, make this drain away? Or is that going to be a problem? Um, I think it is going to be a problem for the moment. Alright, there we go. So we'll add a lane balancer here without messing up the count of items on our belt. Turn that around. And I can't quite tell yet. We need to see the inserters stop moving. We've definitely got some room on the belt. But all of the heat shielding is on this side for some reason. Wait, what's the ratio? 1 to 1 to 1. Just pog.com? Yes, indeed. Uh, we could probably stand to add another one of these. 
down here. Once that LDS gets out of the way, don't want to mess up the count. There we go. Okay. Seems like it's working. Everywhere I look, machines are going at full speed. That's kind of cool. I wonder if there's a way without a sushi belt. I, I guess just with like three different storages and like splitting, um, filtering the output, you could have uh, filtered inserters taking out of a train stop that does multiple resources. All right, so that is our space platform scaffold. We're making 25 per second. We'll be there in less than 2,000 seconds. 33 hours, uh, not hours. Two thousand seconds, and I think you go divided by sixty twice, and that is how many hours, right? Or am I confusing myself? I don't think it's going to take very long, is what I'm saying. Would you recommend getting Satisfactory for Christmas? Probably. Um, there is a demo, so you will get like a good few or several hours out of that. If you're not sure if you like the game, um, you will probably know by the end of that. You got it right, it's 33 minutes. Nice, thank you. Oh, okay, I'll try that at some point. Yeah, that's what demos are for. There should be more of them. I'm quite pleased with this, uh, especially considering... I hadn't really tried it before now. All right, so how are we going with our... We got 3.2k. That is going to take a little while. I feel like this train has been on the way here for a minute. What's it doing? Up, oh, found it. 7.7k steel. That is not what we're looking for. Um, we did set the request stack threshold to 160, which is a full train. So that will prevent this from happening again. But the problem we have here... Is this it? Nope. I think it was further over this way. Uh, the problem we have here is we have a precise loader for the train that assumes it's picking up a multiple of four uh, steel. It is not picking up a multiple of four. And the insertives have stopped because there's no remainder from divided by four. It literally, it literally needs one more steel to get going. Fantastic. Let's uh, ride it, shall we? I kind of like watching a new overly complicated design like this working. Although currently all that's left on the belt is steel, so it's going to be a couple more train trips yet. Once that number goes positive, the inserters stop. Oh, that's what I probably didn't account for when I calculated that we could do a bit more than 3,000 items on the belt. I didn't realize just how many items would be stored in the belt here, like after the inserters stop. Hello, good morning. 
young Jesus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, what do we got now? Nothing. And more steel. Please stop bringing 7,000 steel. I don't know why you are doing this. Request stack threshold. What? Oh, the combinator was turned off. Wait, but where was it? What? What? How? Wait, why were we getting steel deliveries? Oh, you're trying to pick up steel. How did that happen? What? This combinator was switched off. Did I switch it off when I added the request stack threshold? Is that what's going on? That's probably what's happening. I dare someone to type hog.com without the space. I think they'll manage. All right, so that should be working just fine now. What should we do while we wait for this rocket? Uh, we do have another load of science to take into space. Uh, but we don't have enough storage space for it at the moment. Just did it. Nicely done. Uh, what do we need for science to get going again? Um, I think we're going to trace it. Oh, copper. No, there's copper on the belt. Why? Oh, because we're not making any more fluid because we've got enough. Okay, so it's actually blank data card, uh, advanced circuit. Where's that cannon? I thought I configured this thing to... Oh, we actually just ran out of red circuits and I forgot to add um, to add a stack for this, I think. Wait, it doesn't... Okay, add advanced circuit. If advanced circuit less than 200, send up a stack of advanced circuits. That's the wrong signal. Um, what we need is... Uh-oh. I don't think we can. Yeah, there's no recipe to send up advanced circuits with the cannon. Understandably so. Um, I guess we would have to send up the materials to make advanced circuits, which would mean we'd have to produce, we'd have to create green circuits and plastic and wire, and we need stone tablets, and that is, I think I would rather, instead of using cannons, which moment to moment they're easier to deal with, but if we can't send advanced things up in the cannon, I think I would rather set up um, a really smart automated system with rockets. Um, the main issue trying to deal with that is we have to dispose of the cargo rocket parts. Um, do we have some room somewhere? We actually don't. Hmm. Maybe I will just take some red circuits up with me this time. Um, how about 10,000? Which is 50 stacks. Reduce this one by 5,000.
Guess what, Gek? This is a lot of space platforms, though. Okay. We got a bunk circle going on. Should I make another reactor? Currently, we've got 64 core mining drills. And, okay, they are turning on and off sometimes, it looks like. That's an interesting pattern. If they were turning on and off, I think it would be a much spikier... Yeah, the, the power spikes are from the delivery cannons that are destroying items. Hmm. Accumulators are barely doing anything. We've got enough power for now. In that case... What do... Let's see what the next thing that science is going to stop on is. We've got plenty of iron and glass, question mark. Iron and... Wait. Let's see what we can send up with the cannon. We are sending... Okay, why is it I can send glass through a cannon, but I can't send red circuits? That seems a bit strange to me. All right, iron, copper, steel, glass, and heat shielding is already getting sent up to here automatically. We're missing advanced circuits at the moment. Maybe it would be easier just to make a little production area for red circuits up here. Although this is completely full at the moment. Of course you can send glass. What do you mean of course? Is this just the hardest glass? Rough data. Glass into iron. Yeah, I th think... It's really just red circuits at the moment. Also, how did this get completely full? Uh, oh, I think I see why. Also, apparently... Oh, okay. Blacklist, nothing. Let's just make some room in here, shall we? Oh, we have a bunch of red circuits. We have a lot of red circuits over here. Um... I guess we'll make some room and then transfer them over this way. Butter dog? Red circuits are way more fragile than glass shot from a cannon. <laughs> Nokia glass? Yes. Okay. We got... 20 stacks. Oh, this is putting more copper in. Oh, there was copper and iron here, I think, earlier. Yeah, so that wouldn't have helped. Wait, no, it's because I'm taking the iron out of here. Okay. Set filters, whitelist, red circuit. Go. And there's our red circuits on the belt again. And then I'll stop before this gets completely full, I guess. Um, Halen, calm down with the spamming, please. Okay. 
So that should get science going again, I think. As soon as red circuits make their way to this machine. Which, here they come. Fantastic. And that is going to be machine learning data. And then... Oh, here it is. Alright, cool. That will hopefully get us to the end of what we can do with just this one more uh, type of science pack. And while that's happening, we're preparing to uh, go up with a lot of scaffolding. Maybe I should just change this back to 50k. Oh god, that belt. You like it? It is a quad lane uh, sushi belt. Delicious. What, what is that? Is that scrap? I, I literally know what that is. That thing over there. Uh, some of that is scrap. I think. I don't know how scrap got on the sushi belt. Um, the circuit does seem to know that we've got scrap on the sushi belt. Oh, there's scrap in here. What? Why is there scrap on this? I actually have no idea why there's scrap on the sushi belt. Looks like my room. Sushi room. Yes, indeed. We've actually got 213 of these flat solar panels as well. That's not too bad. Um, I should... I should be hoarding a few of these... Um, Uh, multi-spectral mirrors as well. All right. We're ten percent of the way there. What should we do in the meantime? Oh yeah, I don't think I finished the. Uh, the uranium build. Let's go do that. Okay. So we've got our uranium ore processing, we've got coverx. Um, we actually need to set up a train stop to pick up the ore, I think. I could just add one down here. Or over here, maybe. It's a bit slack, but it's probably fine. Oh yeah, up here. Let's do that. Get out of here, old circuit. Um, this train stop is a bit far into the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. We still have room though. So we'll put some uranium in here. And I suppose we're not going to get like more than a blue belt, right? Not even close. Only five per second. Oh, these are all efficiency modules. Why don't we speed things up a little bit? It's all backed up for the moment, but once it gets moving... 
Well, first of all, that doesn't have room. Uh, I guess we'll split from over here. That would be simpler. And since we've got considerably less than a full belt here, we'll just do a balanced loader. Actually, this is exactly the use case for the combinatorless balanced loader. Let me pick this up first. It is very slow, but it's quicker than it needs to be. Alright, I should have realized that I have to give it power. Um, I'll put this here first, and then... Might need a lane balancer though. Uranium ore. What? Why did that one not pick up? Now it's working. Fantastic. Why are you trashing ore? Oh, um, so... Hey, Nyron Wolf. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Iron Wolf. How you doing? How was your stream? Uh, let's put some stack inserters over here. Make the combinator. Turn it off. And, well, I'm not going to connect it until it's all ready, actually. Uh, young Jesus, I'll get to your question in a moment. Iron Wolf Raid? Yes, indeed. Doom Breed? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, re provide Stack Threshold is going to be a full train. And I think that's all it takes for a provider station. Let's give it some wire. What? Copy, paste. And one more. There we go. No worries. I'm Wolf is in my recommended channels. Yeah, he's pretty good. Okay. Uh, let me get this ore out of my inventory, though. Good old, uh, even distribution. It's also going to balance out all of these chests. I do love watching these things, uh, do their thing. So... How much have we got here? 830. We need like eight times this to get a train to come. Let's uh, change these outdated modules. Uh, full speed is probably a bit excessive, but let's see what kind of rate we get. Okay. Uranium ore. 47 point. Okay, that's more than I was expecting. We're kind of bottlenecked on half a belt here, though, because of the way this works. 
Hmm. I never thought of that. I said I was going to go. I'm actually leaving now. Goodbye. All right. Take care, Halen. All right. Young Jesus, to answer your question, why are we destroying ores? Uh, the reason is core mining. So, wow, that's faster than I expected. Um, uh, core mining drills produce core fragments. Core fragments need to be thrown into a pulverizer. Uh, the pulverizer recipe that uses up the core fragments gives us six iron, five copper, six, uh, five coal, five stone, a small chance of some uranium ore, and two vulcanite, and some fluids. Currently, we use significantly more iron than copper or stone. So what ends up happening if we're mostly relying on these infinite resources is we run out of storage space for one thing or the other. So um, looks like these chests are full at the moment. That's kind of weird, even though it's working on the other side. Um, it's happening right here. You can see an example. We currently don't have enough iron uh, in these chests for a train to come and pick it up. Uh, even if we did keep taking every little bit of it, it would eventually just be like nothing else. Um, we actually need to destroy copper and stone in order to make room for iron. So the way we're doing that is bringing it over here and putting it into a delivery cannon and just shooting it at the ground, which destroys most of the resources put into the capsule. Um, so then we've got it on a timer so that the bots don't get themselves destroyed picking up the remains. So it jams up? Yes. Anytime you have to deal with filtered outputs, uh, you're going to need storage space. And once you run out of storage space for one resource or another, it's going to block everything. Um, the same applies to Omni smelters. If you, if you don't have a circuit condition to say something like stop making copper plate when we're at 100,000 copper plate, um, the copper plate is going to uh, end up all the way back here. It's kind of happening right now, actually. What happened here? We've got glass. Oh, I see. It's actually just bottlenecked because this is the somewhat bad old design. Um... But you could imagine the copper plate going all the way back to here when we're not actually making copper plate. Um, if we're trying to make, say, iron plate and we've got copper plate over here, it's never going to go anywhere and the entire thing is going to jam. Uh, can the bots please stop bringing me this stuff? Let's take it home, shall we? So it seems like it seems like we're at the point where we need more of these or maybe just add more cannons. Um maybe I should double the copper and stone cannons. Or maybe something I could have, should have done in the first place is used a crafting combinator to set the recipes for these delivery cannons dynamically. And we could use all uh, 32 of them. No loaders? Nope. No loaders. Why am I carrying 500 blue inserters at the moment? Actually... That might not be the worst idea to finish this build. 
How much uranium do we have? I should probably change this loader. We are bottlenecking on the half belt here. Uh, but what do we got? 8,000. That's not too bad. So there should be a train coming quite soon. There it is. Perfect timing. And it is going to here. Fantastic. I didn't realize with that uh, combinatorless balanced loader that it would actually bottleneck on a half belt as opposed to the inserters themselves. It's kind of interesting. I suppose I could, like, feed resources over there as well. No, it's only going to use the half of the belt that's closer to the inserters. No matter what. Alright. Let's, um... Let's just see this in action first and make sure it's working. We also need iron plate here. Oh, I never actually connected it up. Okay. Um... Request stack threshold, iron plate, um, I don't think we need that much iron plate in this instance. Let's see, how fast does this use iron plate? Only 10 per second, we could use more speed modules, but this has actually been like way more than enough fuel production area for all of our nuclear plants. In any case, uh, a single train load of iron will last quite a long time here. And Definitely do another combinatorless unloader here. That's going to be way more than we need, but there's plenty of room. Good morning, I am Sark. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why is this not getting placed? I have energy, I have roboports, I have bots. Oh, I think I know. We left some bots behind somewhere, didn't we? They're probably crawling back to me right now. I don't see them anywhere, though. Let's just tell them to go home for now. And... Why... Why did I set this to zero? Okay. How is the... How is the uranium not here yet? Wait. Where did the uranium go? Where? Where? Oh, I made a storage for it, I think. But why didn't... No? Here it is. Okay, we found it. But the priority for the storage is negative 100. I don't know why the train went there first, unless this one isn't active. It's not active. There we go. Figured it out. So LTN should make another schedule in a moment.
There we go. So where's that train? It is on its way. Fantastic. Why is... What? What? You're going to pick up uranium. Wait until you're full. And then you're going here. And then... Oh, I didn't change... Okay. This train stop name is wrong. Um, but I need to not touch it until this train reaches its destination. Because the way LTN works, um, it uses temporary stops to get around the ambiguity of uh, identical station names. And what it does is aims a temporary stop over here exactly where this um, train stop is and then it will go to the nearest station with that same name and since I copy pasted this and we've got the wrong station names here if I change this one while the train is on its way here I think it'll end up going to the wrong station and here comes our uranium Fantastic. Let's fix the station name. Uh, if we can find it. There it is. So that, let me just double check the ratio. Uh, 88 uranium ore. That is actually pretty much perfect. Two items per second less than a full belt. Okay. This station should be called nothing but iron ore drop off. Did I enable this? I did not. And then. Do we have iron plate? We should. Yes, we do. That's only 11k. That is 3.2k. That is 1.9k. That is 11. Um, do we really not have a train load of iron somewhere? No? I guess we do need more Omni Smelters. Why don't we use this as an excuse to place down... Uh, a few of our new smelters. I want them to be close to the pulverizers, but there isn't really anywhere to do a row of them at this point. Um, I kind of want to do it, just do them up here. Let's do that. Is LTN an advanced train mod? Yes. Um, so LTN dynamically creates train schedules. Um, the only schedules that I set directly is literally just to tell a train to go to the depot. I can't even change what the train actually does at the depot. It's always just going to be five seconds of inactivity. If I change this, it's going to get replaced um, later on. And you just saw it happen. Um, the train sitting at the depot was assigned a job. It's going to pick up a uh, 16k iron plate at this location, and it's going to drop it off uh, at one of our Omni smelters so that it can make steel. Um, let's get rid of this old uh, rail. That's one way to do it. Another way would be like so. I'm 
Okay. Don't know why those were marked for deconstruction. I thought I was going to get hit by a train for the merest split second there. Let's bring our rail blocks up here. And just check. It's not really going to encroach on the coal. We can always just remove some of this. I'm pretty sure we can put the rail down and also fit some big miners. It's going to get all of the coal. Yep, that's fine. And I think we'll place some more while we're at it. I'll have to go and pick up a lot more rail than usual. Do you need Big Brain to configure LTN? Yes and no. Um, it's sort of not that complicated, but in my opinion, there are some default settings that are kind of a trap. Um, but basically, all you need to do is uh, feed the light, this uh, logistic train stop input. You give this a negative or a positive number, depending on if you want it to be a pickup station or a drop-off station. Uh, so a positive number is a pickup station. You can remember this it's, it's sort of intuitive. Um, if you just connect a bunch of chests to an LTN train stop input with the circuit wire, it's going to read that as a positive signal. And that is telling LTN that you've got items to come and pick up. If you feed it a negative signal, it treats it as a request. And depending on how you've got your trains configured, uh, or your LTN stops as well, um, it will just do the rest. It'll create schedules to um, to get trains to send items to and for, uh, to and fro. Um, there are a few default settings if you go into settings, mod settings, um, that I very strongly recommend changing, depending on how you want to do things, especially if you like to have full trains and full chests or very close to full chests. Um, there is, well, regardless of how you like to do it, there's one setting that I think is a really bad idea. Um, by default, after I think it's uh, two minutes, I think, of trying to unload or load, uh, trains will just move on. So if you've ac if for whatever reason you've got a situation where a train is trying to unload something at a station and the stuff isn't getting unloaded, it'll just leave after two minutes, um, and it will take all of those random items that it's carrying back to the depot. And if you don't take those items out of the train, it's going to get given another schedule which assumes that the train is empty and it's going to go and try and pick something else up. Maybe it's going to pick up nothing because it's full and take the wrong items to the correct station, or maybe it's going to be half full of items and you're going to get a mixed train going to a station that isn't supposed to receive mixed inputs. Um, so I strongly recommend turning that one off. Uh, there's also a setting which makes LTN assume that a train has been destroyed or something if it doesn't get there within a certain time uh, period. I think the default is 10 minutes. So if you have some traffic jams, uh, even if you've like limited a train stop to one train at a time, you're going to have LTN sending multiple trains um, to that stop and it's likely going to overfill under certain circumstances. Um, another one was... Uh, 
uh, inactivity. If a train, if there's no inactivity, if, if there's no activity with like inserters or something for two seconds, a train will leave a stop. That is not necessarily helpful. Um, it's just another way to lead to some of the same problems I just described. Um, and all of these problems are exacerbated if you decide to request LTN to mostly fill uh, the storage at a station. Because you're going to end up with trains uh, that are too full, basically. Um, but as long as you can avoid or figure out the pitfalls, uh, it is a very, very powerful mod. Um, it wouldn't be possible in vanilla to use a single train stop for multiple types of resource like this. LTN is when you like more exact deliveries. Most of the time I like full trains for deliveries, but if you're using, uh, if you're delivering multiple items to a single stop, then getting a precise count for how much you actually want is pretty good as well. In vanilla, what you would do is probably fill a train with like exactly one stack of each type of item that you want to send out there and then use the circuit network locally to say, you know, pick up only so many of this, that, or the other item. In fact, I actually kind of overcomplicated uh, making this kind of train stop the first time with LTN because my starting point was what I had already done to accomplish the same thing in vanilla. Speaking of problems, oh, that's worse than I thought, because this train wants to come here too. Let's send you home for now. I do recommend uh, something that I was doing to start with, because the trains kept coming back to the depot with items, is have uh, at the depots, we take the items out of the train and bring them back to some other little station. So they get uh, taken away somewhere else. Actually, just use vanilla trains for this part. Um, but yeah, situations like that, um, it was obviously far easier for me to just send that train back to the depot full of stuff than to come over and sort it out myself. Um, did we run out of rail? We did. Okay. Go get some more, perhaps. I think I will place down our blueprint first. Um, industrial Omni Smelter Mark II. Go. And unlike... Well, I was going to say unlike our... The first iteration of this smelter, we don't have to worry about uh, LTN bringing items before it's ready, but actually we do, because LTN likes to schedule... If you place this LTN stop and the constant combinator requesting things, um, it actually likes to send trains before they can even uh, get here. So they'll just be sitting here for a long time, waiting for a big build like this. What I should have done when I made the blueprint was set it up so that these constant combinators are switched off until we're ready. Oh, speaking of which. I don't know if it's a feature, deliberate, or... If it's also part of like avoiding performance issues, but it takes a few seconds for LTN to create the schedule, which gives me a chance to turn this off before we have problems. Why is that? 
I think we're missing something here. But that's fine. Copper, stone, iron, iron plate, sand, and it looks like I just forgot to set up the requests for vulcanite blocks over here. We're going to need a lot more belt, and I think it's it's 36 smelters. We're going to need way more belt, actually. Kind of surprised we're still bottlenecking on smelters at this point. Even if the current Omni Smelter design is a little bit flawed, uh, there are a lot of them. And I've run out of energy for my bots because I forgot to replace the portable RTGs. Oops. How is our cargo rocket going? It's ready. Oh, no it's not. It's just ready to launch, Not, it's not full. It's about one-fifth of the way there. And my bots have no energy left, so we may as well go pick up more stuff. A ragamuffin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. With the new train limits in 1.1, you can make very nice vanilla train networks. Um, I somewhat agree. It definitely helps. I am Vera. Thank you for the yay. Yeah, you can definitely do more with vanilla trains, but there's still a lot that you can't do. Um, I should probably check how many things I need. I don't suppose there's a mod to set logistic requests to a bunch of items required for a blueprint. Okay, so starting with the main things, uh, we might need more steel chests. Yourself, we need a lot of blue belt. And insidious killer. Snus? Snus. Uh, blue belt. Let's go. I don't need to carry centrifuges for the moment. Let's get rid of these for now. Same goes for chemical plants. Mostly. And I don't need a thousand... Well, actually, how many fast inserters do I need for this blueprint? Uh, zero? Zero. That's a little bit surprising. Okay, so fast inserters, please go home. Uh, stack inserters, you're up. Gonna need some more underground belt. Probably a hundred splitters is probably enough. We also need some big furnaces. Uh, 36. Um, I think we've got enough crafting combinators. Yes, there's heaps that'll do logistic requests for ghosts or blueprints. Nice. Fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do I need... Well, I'm sure I do need something else, but inventory is already pretty full, so let's just... Let's just go, shall we?
Kazantia, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And away go the bots. Um, I could probably give them a bit of a hand. Carefully. Very carefully. Don't want to mess something up. Whoops. There it goes. Uh, that's the wrong way. There we go. Should you use Spidertron or use Biter AI? Ghost counter is really good. That sounds good. Spidertron or use the Biter AI? What for? Imagine making a mod like LTN, but for automatic construction. Yeah, something I want to play with. Um, I forget the name of it, but with a combination of AAI and some other mod, I think I can program it so that we could place down some blueprints and automatically send construction Spidertrons to get them built. That would be pretty cool. It's almost like... It's kind of like having construction bots literally everywhere. Although... AAI... Yay indeed. I don't know why, but if you use the remote to give orders to units, AAI will do pathing for you. But you, as far as I know, you can't get them to path if you're using circuits to give them move orders. There is a mod that constructs automatically with the help of a Spidertron. Nice. A Shakat. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um... I wasn't expecting that. Looks like we're trying to smelt steel. It does make sense, considering the way I set this circuit up. There's nothing here. What? Oh, were the machines... Were the furnaces... I think when I made the blueprint, the furnaces just happened to be smelting steel. And once we place this crafting combinator, this is going to change to nothing. Yes, it's the weekend. Yes, indeed. All hail the weekend. I am running out of belt. I have no underground belt. We're going to need a lot more underground belt. Uh, 574 to be precise. So I wasn't even close with requesting 200. Let's say we'll need another 400. And we'll probably need another thousand belt. Don't need to worry about the LTN combinators when it comes to pickup stations. Pickup stations are much easier to deal with. Okay, we've run out of bot energy again. Did we place all of the stack inserters? Looks like it. Just waiting for the power to charge up so we can see if there's anything left that we can build on this trip. Just that little bit of rail missing. Whoa! Okay. More than I expected. There's a lot of stack inserters over here, that's why. And now we're going to be running out of bot power again.
We need a lot more filter inserters, I think. Ask for... Well, asking for a hundred every time is probably good enough. We need 264 in total. So another trip or two. I wish you could change Factorio username. T-Hex moment? Wait, what's a T-Hex moment? Uh... Yeah, I don't know... I never even thought about this. Can you change your username in Factorio? Uh, on factorio.com you can. Sorry for the timeout, Nairon. I still haven't... It, it's set to allow uh, regulars and subs, but it never seems to work. Maybe I should change which bot does the moderation or something. Uh, this, I think I forgot to mention this combinator when I did my little tour of how this thing works. All it's doing is just a one-way piece of wire for steel. So, uh, because I wanted to use the existing substations, uh, steel goes to here, to here, to here, and down to here. may not have been here long enough to be a regular. I, I think all of the regulars get timed out by this bot that's so that's set up to respect the regulars. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to work. I'm not sure how I could experiment with that. Like, when I'm doing when I'm tinkering with it in downtime. Anyhow, you can change your name on Woob's site. There you go. I don't need any more giant furnaces. Actually, I kind of want to get started on this blueprint, but it's going to take all the things from my bots if I do that. Nice, can you send link over Discord? It's uh, factorio.com. Is what the bot was shutting down. Um, there we go, industrial furnace, get out of here. And I think we might have enough of the rest. Let's get some more stack filters. Sorry, zero brain no moment? Not at all. Um, if you have, like, better TV or something, you can see people's messages even if they've been timed out. All right, let's uh, head over here again, shall we? On the top, login, then top of the profile page has a change username option. Very helpful. Thank you, Nairon. Okay. Bots are running out of energy again. I forgot just how much work it takes to build one of these. Actually, I wonder how many items it is compared to the first iteration. So this is 1.8k, 1.7k belt. So far it's winning. A little bit more. Well, it's... It's basically the same amount of rail and belt, 
Um, significantly more underground belt for the new one. More stack filter inserters. Uh, half as many uh, tier 3 productivity modules. Only 20... Wait, how can this require 25 speed modules? That doesn't sound right. It should be a multiple of 8, shouldn't it? 8, 16, 32, 24... What? Forty-eight. I was looking at the wrong thing. Wait, how can the old one require twenty-five speed modules? Oh, because it's, um, like, using efficiency modules as well. Okay. Um, splitters. We need a little bit let uh, significantly more here actually so mainly we need way more belt to build this one but you are of other things 32 to 24 what what does this mean membership transport belt repair man i don't know hey so jmo good to see you again welcome welcome hope you're doing well i should have requested a lot more chests. How many do we need in one go? Uh, 400. Anything else? Did I not bring enough rail still? I think we're missing like 100 or 200 rail. To 16 to 32 to 24. It's the color text for how much you've posted on the forums. Okay. Uh, what, are we, what else are we missing here? It's mostly chests now. In fact, it's almost all chests. We're probably going to finish it next time. Whoop, there go the bots. It's the rank which... It's the rank which you bought the game. Like a Patreon tier or something? Some people paid more and thus got station names. I see. Yeah, that's why you have weird random station names. I think the RoboPorts and Labs have names as well. Roboport Christian Luthold. Shout out to Christian Luthold. From way before it got on Steam. Alright, so that should be enough. Why are we just now receiving hard hazard concrete? I haven't used Hazard Concrete in ages. We're not... I don't... I don't know what happened there. How's our scaffolding going? We are at 13,000. It is going to take a while. We're not producing more scaffolding right now. It is going to take quite a while. Well, better make sure it doesn't bottleneck on uh, basic resources. What's the bottleneck on scaffolding? I'm not sure. I, th I suspect one of these are going to have run out of uh, inputs. Yep, we're not making heat shielding right now. Although we have 38,000 remaining, so that's not it yet. We only have 880 low-density structures. We're missing plastic. Plastic. 
we've got 13,000 plus 12,000, but we need 32,000 to trigger a train delivery. Uh, what about up here? Oh, 115,000. Oh, I never, I never, did I not set this up right? I did not. Okay. So we've got a bunch of plastic we can spend. As soon as I finish placing uh, these items, in fact, maybe I can do it remotely. Let's look at our oil products. Um, did I set this one up correctly as well? I did. But uh, rocket fuel is correct. What about this one? Sulfur and sulfuric acid. And this one just has light oil connected. I think all we have to do is connect a chest to this uh, substation. And now we've got a train coming. Here it comes. Fantastic. And we did that while our bots were building stuff. So jam. Is it copper? Easy fix for plastic. Hi. Yes, indeed. Let's uh, finish placing all the chests. And then a little bit of rail that probably doesn't matter that much. Although the bit up at the roundabout will certainly matter. Just realized I made a production line for some for something I didn't need. Well, now you've got extra. Any more items missing? I think we're done. And kaboom. Fantastic. There is a big pole missing over here. And while that's placing, let's switch on our requests. And I'll have to add one for uh, the Vulcanite blocks. So this goes here. What? This goes here. Um, why do I keep... Oh, it's because of this. Okay. Does this just tell us how many Vulcanite blocks we've got and nothing else? Yep. Okay, good. Fantastic. That should do it. I don't know if we've got any Vulcanite blocks available at the moment. We do not. We've actually got 16,000 stone that's accumulated here, even though you get far fewer stone than vulcanite blocks. This is another reason that we need a resource sink. Blueprint it and don't feed it? Don't feed it. Oh, right. Yeah, good idea. Here comes our first train. And we're now smelting stone brick because that's what got here first. That's a pretty good system, actually. So it's going to make a stone brick... Where are you trying to go? That makes sense. It's going to make stone brick until we hit, I think it's 112,000 stone brick, or we run out of stone. This is a pretty good example of one of the reasons I want a central control of the Omni smelters, which is probably something I'm going to patch into this version, because I just happen to have built a really good layout for being able to do that here. 
Um, you know, currently we're making smelters because we want more iron. It's a little disappointing if the first thing that it does is spends all day making like a hundred thousand uh, stone brick. But on the other hand, we do want it to stick to uh, smelting whatever thing it is smelting for as long as possible. Um, because that way you get as much as possible out of bonus production. Because when you switch resources, you lose that bonus. Made a production line for hazard concrete. Don't need it, so I blueprint it and... Don't hook up the inputs. It, it just lost electricity privileges. That's one way to put it. Hey, we switched to... We switched to copper already? That's surprising. I think it's because copper comes first, no? So the way this one works is all of this stuff right here is just sending a negative signal for each recipe if a resource is missing or if we're full. So if there's no iron output, recipe iron plate with the vulcanite block and recipe iron plate, um, all of that gets multiplied by negative one. If we're full on iron plate, output iron plate. And over here we've got uh, an interesting little memory cell. Each greater than zero output one each, so it holds on to each type of signal that has been given, uh, but once you give it that negative it's going to get rid of it. And this little thing here, uh, We've got a constant combinator with each recipe value of one. And this combinator says, if everything is equal to one, output one of everything. So if it's receiving anything at all from this memory cell, it's not gonna output something. And if we're currently not trying to smelt anything, it's gonna say, just try smelting everything and see what happens. But I'm not sure how... Did we run out of stone? We didn't. I'm not sure how we switched from stone to copper here. Um, yeah, I really don't know. There's... None of the conditions are being met to say... Please stop smelting stone brick. The output is nowhere near full. The input is not empty. Um, but as soon as copper arrived, it switched over to copper. Why would that be? These two would have been outputting, so we would have been outputting negative one copper plate over here. I don't know why it isn't currently trying to smelt stone, even though its priority would be copper. Um, I don't think this is a problem. I'm, I'm sure it's going to work just fine, but... I don't like the fact that I don't know why this is happening. Let's see. We got 5k stone. Stone is not equal to zero, so we're not outputting stone brick. Um, to multiply by negative one and cancel it out. Currently we're trying to make copper and nothing else. And that system is preserving itself here. Um, we're not doing any output signals from this thing. That only it this part doesn't do anything unless we stop trying to make anything for a moment. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out why we stopped making stone. This is actually really disconcerting.
there's no way we like lost the signal for stone for a moment, right? That is confusing. These were all placed. It's not like a piece of wire was added. Where is that flow of stone going? Uh, just to these underground belts on one half of it. So it goes into these chests, uh, which are shared between uh, stone and iron plate. This one is iron and copper. This one is sand and uh, vulcanite blocks. It's got stone in it because the stone overflowed from uh, the crafting combinator. Since you say you're not smelting it up top, uh, what do you mean? The, the stone goes all the way through here and into a half belt for each of these rows, uh, columns of furnaces. And it's the... Uh, it's these chests right here that we're reading to decide whether we've got any stone. So that gets passed to this one-way piece of wire, um, onto this red wire, which comes down here, and gets sent to this set of combinators, which checks if we've got any input resources missing. So it goes into chests, yes. We've got six input resources, three chests, and we're using constant combinators and filter inserters to share the chests. Rubber ducky method. So when does it switch from copper to stone? What conditions have to be met? Um, basically, this is going to keep smelting copper until either we're full on copper or there's no copper ore. And the exact same thing should have happened with stone. And even tracing through it, looking for why this is happening, I don't see any other reason. Um, yeah, I'm really quite curious. It is normal that at this point, in this state, it would be holding on to just the copper plate. Once we stop trying to make copper plate, it'll reset back to no signals on this green wire, which will mean that this thing will kick in and it'll put one of each recipe as an input to this memory cell. And then what we smelt will depend on what we're not able to smelt right now. So it should have gone empty with a raw resource before switching to another resource. Yes, it should have gone uh, stone equals zero output recipe stone brick and also regular stone brick recipe. This combinator right here, once stone is equal to zero, it would have output one stone brick, which goes to this combinator right here, one stone brick times negative one, which will go to our memory cell, which will get rid of the one stone brick. Did I? No, it's here. Stone brick, recipe stone brick. So this is... Stone brick itself is neither negative nor positive right now on the memory cell. So we, we're outputting negative one stone brick with vulcanite because we don't have vulcanite, but we're not outputting negative one stone brick. Um, where is it getting this? Oh, hang on. Wait. Where is, it, where is this coming from? Oh, no, I read it wrong. No, this is correct. 
It's only the Vulcanite stone brick recipe that um, we're receiving this signal here saying we don't have Vulcanite, so don't try to make this recipe. We're not receiving a signal to say don't make regular stone brick. Um, so we're not outputting negative one for that, but the signal is absent on this decider combinator, the memory cell. But it, it shouldn't be. The thing is, looking at the circuit, like, there's nothing to, f it seems like there's nothing to find that's like, you can point to and say, aha, that's wrong. It seems like it's all correct. It's just that how did we get to this state where there's no stone brick on this uh, green wire? There's no regular stone brick in that memory cell. We're not outputting stone brick because stone is not equal to zero. Yeah, so... Uh, these combinators right here output negative one of a recipe if for some reason we don't want to smelt it. Um, this one here is each has to be greater than zero, output one each. So we can only possibly have one stone brick as a positive on this thing at any given time, just like we've got one copper plate here at the moment. And these two combinators right here, um, only when this is empty, will output one for each recipe. So we had one stone brick on this memory cell. And then somehow we cancelled it, except none of the conditions to not make stone brick a map at the moment. Looking at the circuitry, it should be outputting both stone brick and copper plate in the green wire. Um, yes and no. In its present state, it does make perfect sense that it is continuing to hold on to just the copper plate signal. Um, because what it does is every time the green wire gets to zero of everything, uh, this right here spits out one of each recipe, and then we just remove... Uh, so then we hold on to that indefinitely, but we remove each recipe that for some reason we're not going to be smelting right now. Odd. Yes, indeed. Very odd. And I did test this thing as well, so I'm really not sure what's happening. I'm also not sure why this one is... Oh, I think I know. One point one K over here, and this one's empty. Yeah, all of the copper is still accumulating in these chests. Um, this one's actually full, quote unquote, because we're only using half a chest for copper. That is odd. I hate to say it, but I think this is actually going to work, and we're never going to find out how that happened. Do you have a specific goal with SE, or is it just, or is the plan just to beat the game? Pretty much just beat the game. Although, something that's down to pretty much my playstyle, I think I would like to get uh, a sufficient amount of core mining for everything. Uh, have everything fully automated and infinite, even if it's not that fast. Yeah, this is a little bit strange. So... At this rate, we may as well stick around until the copper plate hits a hundred. Well, it, we're actually only halfway there. I should maybe change the 
instead of train loads, perhaps this should be like more representative of how much we can fit here. Um, or I could add the one more light to make it make a bit more sense. Um, we usually do six lights just because the seventh one never ends up getting turned on and it just sort of fits better at the drop-off stations, but I'm thinking perhaps this could be six and seven, and that'll be a lot more representative of uh, how much we've actually got here. Actually, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Let's patch this for the other ones. That was easy. That was easy. And this one will be slightly more work. But not much more with picker dollies. Fantastic. Okay. I kind of want to see this thing switch over to another input, but on the other hand, um, I don't want to just stand around here all day. Hi, if you have a moment, could you explain how the delivery guns are used? Sure. Do you mean how they're used, like, normally, or how I'm using them right now? Um, let's go back to base for the first one of those. What's the name of that mod? Picker Dollies. Yes. Um... It's kind of an odd name. Mods. Normally, okay. So the thing, the only thing you want to ignore here is that we're using a crafting combinator. But basically, well, why don't I just get a bot to deliver one of these? Uh, basically, you set a recipe. It's going to take one stack of whatever resource and it requires a delivery cannon capsule. Um, then you click this button right here. Well, you're gonna have to pick the surface first. Uh, click this button here to choose where the cannon is aimed. And if you aim it at a chest of the cannon variety, uh, delivery cannon chest, it will land here without um, wasting any resources, unless you count the cannon shell. Thank you, no worries. Good to see you again, Nicknock. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. And, uh, Ian Steele, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. So yeah, over here, just set the recipe. Um, you can't put everything in a delivery cannon. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, but you basically just pick a resource, it'll require one stack, and then click this, click where you want it to target, and that's how that works. And you'll have to flick this switch on when you're ready as well. A Christoph game. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In the game, I have only have the recipe for scrap. It's odd. Thank you for the follow, Ian Steele. The noise those cannons make is sick. Lol. Let's uh, let's have a look at the noise that these cannons down here make. We've got about 12 seconds before they fire. Zero seconds is when they start um, crafting the next one. And away they go. And I left my RoboPort on, and now my bots are faithfully bringing me crap. 
I should redesign this thing. Um, I mean, the whole thing is good except for the cannons themselves. Um, I think I would like to design it to filter inputs and bring those inputs to every cannon and set the recipes based on what we need to get rid of. How do you keep them from crafting? Um, by limiting the inputs. These uh, fast inserters are all set to stack size 1. T is less than 5. And we have a timer here. Um, constant combinator T equals 1 linked to this decider combinator which has its own input linked to its own output. Um, so that makes that signal go round and round in circles. It adds one T to the decider combinator every tick. So that number keeps going up. And then we just say T is less than some amount. This is 30 seconds, 1800 ticks. Uh, if T is less than 1.8K, output T input count. And then the reason this is T is less than 5 instead of something like T equals 0 or T is less than 1 or 2 or something is it just takes a few ticks to make the fast inserter actually work. If you only feed it like one or two ticks of being enabled, you'll see the little green light flicker and maybe the arm will move a little bit, but it won't actually pick something up. So mats load in and just the capsule gets held back. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, they have to wake up. Yeah. So if I were to change this so that we're using... I think I actually need to change this. Um, we might need more cannons as well. But considering that we're constantly destroying copper and stone here, and when I look down at our um, at our output from the pulverizers, oh, this actually looks fine. It's probably because we took a ton of copper away and brought it to our new smelter. So this is not going to last, I think. I could be wrong. Oop. Well, there's a temporary solution to this problem. Just build more smelters. But yeah, um, once that all settles down again, I think we're going to be... Just constantly destroying copper and stone and not fast enough. And we'll still be clogging up here because we've got too much copper and stone for the outputs. Um, but currently it's looking pretty good. I think it's because I made this Omni Smelter. It doesn't... The thing about this one... It... Why is that... Something is wrong with this display, because looking at the chests, there's like 1,000, uh, 1.4k copper, but the lights seem to imply that it's full. Or is that six train loads, actually? No, six eights would be 48,000. Oh, that says each. That should not say each. That should say... Copper ore, and this one should say stone. There we go. Because normally I don't have them connected to each other. How many total core miners? 64. Uh, here they are. And currently they're switched off. Or oh, no, they're not switched off, they're just backed up. Uh, so we've been bottlenecking on the pulverizers, or rather we've been bottlenecking on too much copper and stone in our output, which has been clogging everything up. Um, so what I want to change here is 
probably add more delivery cannons as well. But I want some kind of maybe sushi belt. Um, some kind of common bead that all of these go to. And then we set the recipes for... We could... It's a complicated circuit, but uh, NG figured it out. I can just copy-paste it. Um, we could pick the resource that we have the most of. Um, and focus on getting rid of that first. But yeah, we've got all of this space uh, that's unused. So we could definitely add a lot more delivery cannons here. We obviously have way more than enough belt capacity to support it, especially since we're deliberately delaying these things. Uh, every 30 seconds we're sh firing. Um, we're going to need more bots. Definitely. Which means we're going to need more roboports. I hate that that doesn't fit. Um, we can do this, right? Yeah. Hey, Veldek. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Whoops. Is the hazard... Hazard create the damage radius of the crash capsules? Appro approximately. I haven't exactly measured it precisely or anything, but um, I was wearing the overpowered shields um, from the sandbox mode, and then I was wearing the late game shields. Oh, there we go. It does hurt me there, but not very much. So actually, yes, I think it is pretty well measured. Let's find out. We haven't really tested the damage radius, it's just a pretty thing. Well, we're about to find out. Come to think of it, I think I did test it. That's actually perfect. I don't think you're going to get any more accurate with, um, you know, the blocks and concrete in this game. So we got nope. uh, four Mark III shields for a total of 400 hit points right now. Ninja dogs, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, that doesn't hurt too much, although it probably would obliterate me if I didn't have power armor. So that's what we want to avoid our robots running into. Okay. But I think I'll go to the trouble of redesigning this part um, after adding more Omni Smelters and things. Because just the, the thing about uh, one of the other advantages, if you like, of this Omni Smelter design is it has ridiculous storage because we've got um we've got the usual 24 chests which was is a i think a bit more than seven train loads um but we've also got half a chest times 36 so 18 plus 24 times uh Hold on, 18 plus 24, 42 times 50 times 48. We can fit over 100,000 copper. That's not counting the belt. Um, so it's probably closer to like 102k copper ore uh, in this system. And it looks like that is just about how much copper ore we have here already. Wow. Maybe we should make another Omni Smelter before we move on to other things. But I kind of want to play with the uranium. 
surplus resource destruction due to ratios from core mining. Yes, indeed. What is the purpose of those cannons shooting? Uh, I am Vera. So we make core miners spit out uh, core fragments. The pulverizers have to take those core fragments and turn them into six iron, five copper, five coal, five stone, etc. We need a lot more iron than we need stone, and we need significantly more iron than we need copper. So what ends up happening if we don't do this is we end up with way more copper and stone in these chests. And it it's not just because I've done this fancy schmancy uh, combined station here. Like, no matter how you go about it, you have to have filtered outputs leading to storage somewhere. Um, so... Eventually we end up with too much stone, too much copper, and not enough iron for a train to actually come and collect the iron. So we basically, the whole thing stops and we get nothing. Is space exploration harder than Crestorio 2? You can do both if you want, in steps of science packs. Um, I haven't played that much Crestorio 2, but I think probably space exploration. Incredibly well done. Love it. Thanks for the explanation. No worries. Let me just scroll up real quick, make sure I didn't miss someone. What's the calculator from? Haven't been happy with most I've found. Uh, do you mean the mod? Oh, this one. Just calculator. Um, let's check. Uh, calculator dash UI 1.1.1. Don't lurk here, only post. Hey, the West dude. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It'd be cool if you had some higher point redemptions. I want to flex my cogs. <laughs> yeah, I was actually talking about that earlier. I'm going to add some. I'm not sure what they'll be just yet. Uh, What else? Omni Smelter is just blueprint placement, isn't it? Uh, what do you mean by that? Just blueprint placement. I like R-E-I-D. Smart and chill. Flexing cogs just start away. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I am sufficiently motivated to add some bigger rewards. Thank you, no worries. Can't wait for food, nom noms. What happens when you shoot it into the sun? Don't you destroy more items per shot? I haven't tried it. Shall we try it? Oh boy. My ears. Yeah. Oh no. More? No more. Nope. We've got a war going on here. Now well, they'll tucker nope. themselves out sooner or later. Okay, let's aim this at the sun, shall we? Uh, how about some disgusting copper that we can't get rid of? Calidus orbit. Yeah, I don't think you can aim it at the sun because. If I go for Calidus, it's just this. It's just some rocks and stuff. Um, and if you aim it... Well, anywhere. Um, it doesn't destroy all of the items. Yeah. I actually had a moment where I thought this was going to be a lot easier. Um, because I aimed it at the water and it seemed to destroy everything. But actually what happens is the items will just appear at the nearest piece of land. Gonna have a channel point depression on our hands. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Um, let's get rid of this for now. I think I will work on the... 
Okay, since my inventory is so full of relevant stuff right now, um, I might just get started on the next Omni Smelter, but we'll leave it and go and play with Uranium once we get started. Um, there was something that I added to this, so I will copy-paste it. And, whoop. And... I can't fit this. Uh, bots. Get this out of my inventory for now. There we go. Alright, robots go. What would happen if you water fill a planet <laughs> and then shoot at that planet or moon? Good question. Would the game crash because item can't fill valid surface? I don't know. It depends on how good the exception handling is from the devs. If they... If they set up their exception handling such that it would account for something as unforeseeable as that when they made the vanilla game, uh, I would be impressed. Then again, that's just cheating because it's waterfill. Yeah. I mean, if you've got any... If, you, if you're if playing a game of Factorio where you think of biters as uh, the threat of biters as being part of the game, then Waterfill is cheating. But if you don't care for it, if you feel like doing a peaceful playthrough or something, then it's totally fine. Play the game you, the way you like. But yeah, it's, I don't think it. Uh, I don't think having water fill on a death world, for example, uh, offers a particularly interesting challenge. Let's put it that way. If it's just decorative and peaceful, sure. Yep. Untargetable wall seems strong. Yes, indeed. Uh, Halidsk shelf. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I only use water fill for nuclear. Otherwise, pump anywhere greater than water fill. Definitely. I like to have biters, but not standard settings. Yeah, I usually like to have all or nothing with biters. Um, if I... I mean, obviously, this is my first playthrough of space exploration, so I didn't want to change everything. But normally... If I'm going to have biters, I'm going to, like, turn on Rampant or this old mod called Misanthrope. I don't know if there's an equivalent to that anymore. I think someone may have mentioned it, but I don't remember. Um, but make them extremely dangerous or don't bother with them. You know, unless you're new to the game or something, obviously. I love Waterfill because fluids hate me so much. <laughs> The idea that you can build a rocket from iron ore, but not dig a trench around your base? Like, come on. Fair enough, P. Simon, but... I think uh, if you add some stuff to the biters where they can deal with water, um, that changes the discussion. How about swimming biters? I recommend pump anywhere if you're using water fill currently. So you can still get your water, but not your OP walls. There's a solution that doesn't tempt you to cheat from time to time. If you can dig a trench, their bodies can fill them. I think bug goo for science was the way to include the bugs for progression. I agree with most people on that one, that the bug goo or whatever you call it. Wait, do you mean a mod or like the old vanilla behavior? 
Also, why is this train here? It's trying... How did this happen? Um, we somehow got the stone train coming in from the correct direction. And then this one is trying to reach the... Oh, there we go. Maybe there was a signal missing. It was probably a signal missing. Flying biters? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Plus armored tank biters, Superman biters. If you want super duper biters, check out Rampant. They are varied and some of them are very scary. And many of them are like far more effective against your walls than against you and vice versa. AKA Mutalisks from StarCraft 1. Yeah, there's actually a mod uh, that literally just puts in flying biters that steals that particular set of sprites. I didn't realize we would get this much building done in one trip. Probably because I left my requests on. The one thing I don't like about Rampant is that spitters target your walls. SCP biters. What's this new rail block you have made? Uh, it is the next iteration of the Omni Smelter. And I've made quite a few improvements. Um... Well, it's kind of hard to see from here. So the circuit control is, I think, much simpler, much easier to understand for newer players. Um, the only really tricky part is right here, but the rest of these combinators are just saying if a certain condition is met where we can't or shouldn't smelt whatever resource, don't do it. So all of these ones just say, if we're full, stop making iron plate, for example. All of these ones say, if a resource is missing, um, don't try. And this circuit right here has a memory cell, um, each greater than zero, output one each. That's for the recipes to hold on to them. And over here we have... Uh, if everything is equal to one, output one of everything, and a constant combinator connected to that that has one of each um, recipe. So from its default state, what's going to happen is, because it's, there's nothing on this green wire right now, uh, this decider combinator is going to receive one of everything, pass it through, then the memory cell is going to receive all of those inputs um, and it's going to hold on to them. Except also, since we're missing resources, for example. Oh, do we have iron here already? No. What? If iron ore equals zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. So iron ore equals zero, so we're outputting iron plate and recipe iron plate with the vulcanite blocks. That goes to this negative one times combinator, which goes to here. So it gets rid of whatever we can't make at the moment. Um, kind of amused that I ran out of constant combinators. Uh, let's drop one right here. And there it goes. So you can see, maybe I should have like saved the game and stepped through that one frame at a time to show how it works. I'll do it next time. But as soon as that constant combinator was placed, um, all of that got passed through here. And then our memory cell held onto those signals, except it's receiving a negative for whatever we're not allowed to make. Um, because it's each greater than zero, it gets rid of relevant uh, signals. And then because this one is receiving two for some of these signals, the stone and the copper, 
um, it's not outputting all of this stuff. Rampant spitters break my flame funnel. Rip. Okay, Veld, I logged into Discord on my phone so I can take pictures for you. Nice. SCP biter equals... <laughs> What's this new rail block? Just answered. Um, the inputs, this part of the circuitry is actually a lot simpler than last time as well. Um, all we're doing is saying that we're only allowed to have so much of each resource in these chests. Each chest shares between two resources. Um, I don't know how this filter inserter in the blueprint ended up with copper. Oh, yes I do. Because the overflow chest ended up with some copper in it. The sad thing is I can't build Omni Smelters in Crestorio 2 because they have their own recipes. Uh, so do industrial furnaces, but we found a way. It is a mod called Crafting Combinator. And it's this little blue guy right here. You just have to point it at the uh, building. And these are the settings I'm using this time. Half of these are set to behind left for the overflow chest. What? <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. This is how we're doing it. That's why we have these signals to set the recipes. Um, like, you may have noticed we've got this recipe, uh, this signal called recipe copper plate, and it includes the um, vulcanite block. Mind equals blown. No worries. Oh no. Rip Thanksgiving. Can I get permission for a link? Sure. Permit. Uh, okay, I should probably finish building this thing since it's mostly done. Kind of. And all the trains are waiting. I love these roundabouts. This is by far my favorite rail system that I've ever made, even though the old parts of it are really bad. I'm loving what's happening with the rail blocks. We don't have Thanksgiving here? Yeah, we don't have it. There you go, everyone. Flame funnels. So with this mod, I can get Omni Smelters. Yep. In Crustorio 2, where you have to set the recipes, you can get Omni Smelters with this one. You do need a single crafting combinator for every single smelter. Thanks, I'm gonna go burn some biters. I love food pictures. Okie dokie. Let's see this funnel. Oh, it's a uh, linked for a blueprint. Factorio bin. I should probably try that one. Okay, away we go. Even before finishing this, um, just the storage for copper and stone is going to be helping, albeit temporarily. And. There goes another train. What are you doing? Is this full? Wait, what? How did this happen? You are full. Go home, small train. You are drunk. There's pictures for individual prints. Click. Oh, nice. Oh, I like this site. I might have to port all of my blueprints over here.
Yeah, that is... That is much better. And this is a blueprint book that we've linked to. We just click on everything. That's cool. Haste bin deletes my Factorio blueprint strings within seconds. Yeah. That is very unfortunate. Fringe paste bin. Also, why am I holding heat shielding? Oh, I think I remember. Okay, we'll hold under one stack, fine. Whoop. We found a wild bot or two. How is our... 22k, we're nearly halfway there. And once we get there, we can make a whole lot of space uh, for building a base in orbit. Might as well use GitHub. Rip. For Factorio paste bins, you need an account, but you don't gotta pay anything. Huh. That's an odd choice. I wonder what the rationale behind that is. Maybe... Maybe there's some kind of, like, bot spam or something that it's confusing it for. That would make a lot of sense, actually. I can't see the rail on the map here because everything's rail-colored. Not sure I like that. Maybe we should concrete this up just for the sake of the view on the map. And there goes our sand. It's because they're dense encoded blocks and they've had issues with people sending things they shouldn't that way. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Concrete the whole well. Um, that would take a minute. Lone Wolf, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't know if you're here earlier today, but I didn't see you for a minute. What's the difference between bot spam and random Factorio blueprint strings? Is this a setup for a joke? It's meant for code posts, not strings. They are huge strings, yeah. So, what are the advantages of this furnace layout over the old one? There's less... There's far less um, circuit complexity, but it is all very reliable. We don't have a sushi belt that we have to worry about the count being incorrect on. Um, we have more throughput of resources. Uh, we have... Um, we don't have a bottleneck of belts for certain resources on the output. We can do almost four full blue belts of iron and copper, provided we have uh, vulcanite. If we don't have that, we'll get a hundred iron plate per second. Um, the circuitry over here is way simpler as well, and it's also very well uh, configured to being able to add some central control later on, because we can just send these signals in from central and just get rid of the ones that locally we can't do. And also because of the way the const, uh, crafting combinators work with this lovely setting right here, keep crafting until zero. Once a signal is selected, the combinator will not change the recipe again until that signal reaches zero. So if we feed the network all of the recipes, but in an order that is how we want to prioritize things, uh, we should end up with every Omni smelter that can be smelting something, smelting something. 
even though we want to super prioritize steel, for example. Did we build everything? No, of course not. What are we missing? Filter inserters, mostly. Um, looks like we can finish this in one more trip. Uh, there's not enough throughput on the belts for sand, for example, to keep up with it indefinitely, but there's a ton of storage for the sand. And anything that you're currently not smelting uh, with that setup is being loaded. Currently we're doing stone, but we're loading up on sand. So when we... When we go to smelt um, glass, we're going to be able to do... Uh, I forget how much it was, but it's definitely over 10,000 glass before it starts to slow down. Probably about 20,000, considering that while we're smelting the glass, um, sand, uh, more sand is going to be pouring into the chests. how you would detect if something is gibberish or a factorio stream. You can't, that's why you don't have an account. Yeah. I mean, unless you... Unless you, like, pick the factorio dev's brains or something for how to recognize a factorio blueprint string or start from scratch trying to reverse engineer it, I, I don't think that's a reasonable amount of effort to expect from them, right? With the sand slowdown debuff from alien biomes, concreting the whole world is a good option, lol. So would um, pasting stone everywhere be? I can't remember. Um, is this space exploration, or did they add this to vanilla? I can actually take stone and just put it down as... Uh, as a surface. It gives me 120% walking speed, which is pretty good considering how incredibly cheap it is. Unfortunately, I don't have that much um, inventory space right now. Whoops. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, that would definitely solve the problem of not being able to see the rail on the map. It's base 64. Base 64 encoded JSON. It all went to your trash. Yeah, I saw. But I don't have room over here as well. So you'd have to try base 64 decode every bit of huge string gibberish bot, bot spam to not accidentally delete a factorio string. Yeah, that seems, um, that seems like more effort than is necessarily reasonable to expect. I don't know. It, it, that's sub subjective, but that's like my opinion. Um, I kind of want to paste stone everywhere over here now. Hmm, what can I put in my trash slots? Give to me more stone, please. And make this thing as large as possible. More stone. Cheapest pave the world ever. More stone. And the nice thing is I actually need to get rid of stone. I think my auto wall, wall build thing is working. Nice. Make sure you post that in the blueprints channel when you feel like it's ready. I kind of like the look of this, although it's almost the same color as the rail, ironically enough, considering it makes the rail far more visible on the map. If only Factorio had some neat feature, like if you could decode only the first 64 characters, you get 
Factorio. Hmm. Couldn't someone figure out how to imitate that to get around the, the ban on bot stuff or whatever? Need to double check it had so many bugs. Lol. <laughs> yeah, there's always something. Um, I kind of got over it, but like my first really good Omni Smelter design, um, Azura asked me why I hadn't uh, like published it. And well, for one thing, there had been like a mistake in there somewhere that I kept having to correct. But other than that, like kind of paranoid that there would be some mistake in there somewhere, like no matter how much I tried to check. But it's not like someone's going to bite your head off for that. Just go for it. I mean, do try to test it and avoid, you know, publishing error-ridden stuff, but you can only do so much. I don't like how it makes it difficult to see the stone on the belts, but other than that, cheapest concrete ever. First time using circuit logic? Yeah, it takes some... It takes some tinkering. It takes some time. I think I'm just going to finish paving this one and move on. I should probably rebalance the stone after this as well. Even though it will happen automatically over time, um, it's possible that we'll get a train struggling to unload if we leave that as is. Are we missing a spot? Yeah, there we go. Alright. It's a little bit easier to walk on than snow, at least. I'm sure there's some solution. Downside of being base 64 would be that it's deterministic, so it would always be the same characters at the beginning, if that's the feature. Yeah, someone could imitate it. Nothing's impossible. Uh... Depends what we're talking about. Okay. Um... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's something we want to do with oil down here, isn't there? Or did I fix that? I think I fixed that while bots were doing things. Yeah, it was plastic. Plastic wasn't getting taken. And because of that, we stopped making LDS for longer than we should have. Okay. Let's go back to base, and we'll change some of these requests. Uh, a bit more than that. Uh, what else did I request too much of? Chests? Let's make this a hundred. Um, stack inserted. I might just leave these ones on two hundred for now. We'll see how that goes. Or maybe a hundred and fifty. Einstein said going the speed of light is impossible. Could be. I mean, if you want to be pedantic, uh, there are definitely things that are by definition impossible. Or non-curved space. Thinking about the curvature of space um, tickles my brain uncomfortably. Okay. What Oh yeah, it was uh, the uranium stuff. Let's get some more centrifuges. Which we've got plenty this time. 
And I think that's everything for the moment. A non-consensual tickle of the brain, yes. Well, it depends. It depends if I decided to think about it or if something just imposed it on my brain. All right, what do we got here? That is going to the wrong spot. Um, how about this? And pick this stuff up. At least the belt system managed to prevent it from getting too bad. Um, okay, there is a problem with this design. Because we're not putting stuff straight into the chests, uh, we may end up without enough uranium-235 to get Coverex started, and then this output is going to get stopped, and we're never going to... We're never automatically going to get Coverex started this way. Um... I can solve this by just not using a long arm. That's pretty easy. Um, let's do a deconstruction planner for long arm inserters. Be gone. And then copy paste this wait why is that why are these alternating they don't need to be alternating right Well, that's just my usual thing of doing sets of two, I guess. No, that's totally fine. So, except I want the belt thingies to line up properly. It's not a thing, therefore no thing can go faster. True, but you can use the word shadow as a global variable for the absence of light. We're getting into philosophy. That's why it can move faster, because it's technically not anything. The absence of information that we've given a name. Cold doesn't exist. Yes, indeed. Globally aligned zero, 0 in the world. I used a save editor to move a foundation. A tiny amount to align it with a global grid that's flush with integer values. Okay. I understood those words, but not the meaning. Uh, maybe I should just use the bots to do this. It's not going to be that much stuff to pick up, right? But, right. Chat has entered big, big brain moment. Seems like it. Move a foundation. What foundation? Good question. Okay, so this goes here. And then this goes here. That's going to repeat except for the substation. Um... We want belty bits to be like so. Read dot contents hold. Um, I think if there is four uranium 235, uh, 238, that'll be enough. Just to make sure Every machine gets some. This goes here, and this goes here, and so on. Copy, paste, like so. It could.
could make a blueprint to make this go faster, but I'm kind of afraid I'll mess something up. Okay. Do I need any circuitry, or is it just okay if this chest fills up? I'm not sure. Also... Get rid of this, please. And... If I copy, flip, paste, is it going to line up everything, or is something going to be weird? I think something might be weird, but let's try it. No, that should be totally fine. Alright then. This last bit of belt... Oh, that's... Wait, what? Uh, this one's going to be a bit weird. I'll have to flip that around, but everything else is normal. Yeah, it's just because this is going the other way. And this part doesn't need circuit, right? Gonna need a whole lot more blue inserters. So let's get a few more. And head back to base. Probably limit the chest, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It I could... Oh, this might be a good opportunity to use a combinatorless balanced loader. This is actually a great opportunity for that because one of the nice things about this is the way it scales. So you don't have to change like the combinator settings or anything. Where are our blue inserters? There's definitely... Oh, I forgot to tick this button. There we go. Um, I could probably start working on the combin combinatorless balance loader right now. So we connect circuit wire to all of these. And we're just going to say, um, enable, disable, I was going to say everything equals zero, but if we do that, oh, we need to read hand contents hold. Now, if we do it that way, they're going to sort of synchronize, sort of. They're kind of, some of them are out of alignment with each other at the moment. But I think what we're going to do is read maybe this bit of belt right here. And I don't really mind if this one sends more resources through because we're reading the hand contents of the other inserters. So, uranium uh, greater than or equal to 8. Maybe this doesn't make any sense and it totally conflicts with the circuit logic we've got on the belts. Oh, this one's failing to pick this stuff up. Hmm. Okay. This has to be... This one doesn't have a condition on it. 
except it does read hand contents. And this one has to be um, greater than 8, definitely. That's kind of, sort of, working. I don't think that's the design we're going to settle on, but there should probably be a way to set this up just using circuit wire, no combinators, and it'll scale for the entire thing. That will do sort of a, not exactly a balanced load, but it'll ensure that everything gets a little bit. The amount of uranium-238 that we need for each machine is very slow. So that part's not a concern. Let's head back there. How does that work? Um, so the idea is... I've actually got a demonstration somewhere else that will show how it works a bit better. Um, here we have a... Oh, that one actually has a combinator. Uh, here? Yeah, here we go. Here we've got a combinatorless balanced unloader. Um, the way it works is we read the hand contents of every inserter. And we read these bits of belt right here. And the inserters just have to be... Uh, the enabled condition is just everything has to be equal to zero. So when there's nothing in the inserter's hands and nothing on these bits of belt, they're allowed to activate. Um, what I'm trying to figure out right now is can we do a combinatorless uh, somewhat balanced loading system. I don't really care about the... I don't really care about the um, chests being perfectly balanced or anything. I just want to make sure that they all get something. Um, I don't think this is working though. This one's stopping. Yeah, this is, isn't going to work. I think I do have something in mind that might be a bit more effective. I'm going to have to watch out though. All of these um, combinators are going to have those weird settings now. Also, maybe I should have... No, that's fine. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should set these up like one tile over. No. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Pretty simple, actually. Uh, uranium has to be greater than... 100. And I just have to paste it over each of these. Didn't even realize. All right, this goes here. Let's use the navigation satellite so I don't have to walk around. Uh, that one's a bit different. We don't have to worry about that one. There we go. Okay, so we got our... 
Ooh, that's painfully close. Wait, how did... How did all of this uranium-235 end up over here? This one should... Oh, it's because it's on both sides of the belt. Hmm. I should probably... I should probably put all of the uranium on the one side to start with. Um, unfortunately, I need to put it on the opposite side, which is going to look awkward and not great. But what can you do? Okay, so this goes here. We'll take our uranium-238 back, uh, 235 back, thank you very much. I'm going to drop it all in here, and we'll see how it works. So this bit of belt wants four... What? What? Oh, oh, oh no, I see the problem. I don't think we necessarily need this. Um... I may have forgotten to set the filters on these filter inserters. Um, that is theoretically possible. Okay. So now, bonk. Yeah, that was a well-deserved bonk. So now we put all of our 235 in here. I might just steal this part. Yeah, that is working as intended. Not the most advanced Kovrex system, it will have a bunch of uranium-235 sitting in this machine before it spits out over here, but it gets the job done, and it's simple, and it's not prone to failures or anything. Okay, what comes next? Um, did we get rid of that coal? Fantastic. So now we just need uh, uranium fuel cells. And why don't we make nuclear fuel while we're here as well? So if we're going to do that, we're going to need another drop-off station. Um, I could just put it up here. In fact, that probably makes the most sense. I'll have to move some of these substations, that's fine. Where is this one going to fit? What's the neatest place that we can... Nowhere? Okay, cool. I don't love the look of that, but what are you going to do? Um, we actually need substations going further up here as well. We'll tidy that up after we get it all working. So, we could drop off rocket fuel either here or here. Um, I think we'll do uranium fuel cells on this side and rocket fuel on this side. That would be more convenient, especially because we've got uh, the end of the belt for uranium-238 over here. So, iron plate comes down this way. I need to get rid of these trees. They're mostly dead, anyway. 
Oh, actually, no, they don't look that dead. I'm not sure. No, I, that might just be their normal... Where can I get a look at something that's not polluted? Nowhere? Nowhere. Okay. So I think uranium fuel cells just go in assembly machines, right? Or come out of assembly machines, rather. Broke my keyboard by sneezing? Yikes. That is unfortunate to say the least. I hope you've got a spare. Um... Let's do a bunch of these. I think that's going to be all we ever need, honestly. Yes, indeed. Okay. Rate calculator says 23 uranium fuel cells per second. Um, currently, all of our nuclear plants... Uh, this is 0 0.08... And if we didn't have the fuel management here, 0 0.08, hmm, I feel like this might already be enough, uh, nuclear fuel assembly. And we can just leave room if we want to, uh, upgrade it. Okay. So... That's accelerating. I want one side of the belt over here to be uranium-235, and the other side is 238. Um, do we want to... Do we want to just take this belt to get the U-235. If we do it like this... I don't think we need stack inserters for this, but we'll soon find out. So if that's going to be... that's wrong. That's wrong. Um, how about... There's no neat way to do this, is there? I just have to merge them like so. Not like that. And splitter. Alright, that's pretty straightforward actually. Although I'm wondering if when the uranium-238 is ever going to reach the end of this belt. Maybe we should just limit the input chests. Um, I don't know. It seems like it is going to fill up, but... I kind of want to... Hang on, I have an idea. This might actually be brilliant. This is going to be the laziest, weirdest sort of balanced loader if this works. 
So uranium-238 comes in here. What? What? Did I just... Did I just see a yellow inserter manage to pick up an, a single item of a blue belt that wasn't saturated? Got my own handmade keyboard? How, how so? Okay, let's test this, I guess, since we've run out of uranium ore for now. How much do we have here? 44k. Why is, um, we have 50,000, oh no, wait, that's, we have 14,000 uranium ore here. Why, why is this not working? Magic? You placed a magic inserter? How so? Clip shows it did pick up. Yeah. I think it might have something to do with this inserter placing it right here. Whereas, if we do this... What? What? Since when does... What? Huh? It got past all of these inserters. Why is this one able to... It failed this time. That is so weird. The chosen one? I don't know. Alright, why don't we just pick as much of this up as we can. Oh, it's actually in here. And put it in a chest or two. Uh, close enough. This is not working as expected. I wonder if... Hold on, I have to test this. Um, I wonder if the side of the belt matters. Well, let, let's do like a few at a time. Or like one at a time or something. This is perhaps a little bit too fast. Since when do yellow inserters have such an easy time taking items off blue belts? Since I started to count on them to struggle, I guess. Submit a bug report? I don't know. <laughs> Matrix inserter. <laughs> What if we just do a stack size of one here? Oh! Oh ho! Okay. So if you give it one item on the close side of the belt, the yellow inserter doesn't manage to get to it. What if we give it one item on the far side? Not able to reach it. Stack size 2. Interesting. How about that? It goes for the first one and manages to catch the second one. Yellow are too slow if they're not backed up. Yeah. How interesting. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Uh, make these yellow. Who would have thought there's a 
very specific application for something like yellow inserters. Should the final boss be blue? Alright. That should be fine in any case. As long as the... Um... As long as the 238 is sort of getting past, but also getting put... It, it's it's kind of a really vague, rough, um, balanced load kind of thing. Let's get rid of these for a second. I want to empty these chests and see how it goes. What? Oh, there's only a couple. Perfect. So if it's coming in fast enough, it obviously backs up like that. Pretty soon we reach a hundred items in the chest, and then it's going to let it through. This is obviously happening much, much faster than uh, Coverex Enrichment is accelerating. Even though it's a bit slow in and of itself. I think there's also something with exactly how many uh, fractions of tiles away they're inserted. Interesting. So once this reaches 100, this goes through here. Um, oh, I was about to say, but what I'm really curious about is why we haven't received uranium ore down here. But there it is. So that's going to give us uh, 10 per second. Should get this going pretty quickly. Although I wonder if it is too slow because um, we, we could change the numbers for this. We could set this to like 30 or 20 or something because I don't want this blocking output of the uranium. This is actually full. Okay, what if we say there only has to be 20 in the chest before we let this stuff through? Oh cool, someone made a sushi belt without combinators? Really? Wow. Um, is it the kind... I, I presume you're not talking about the kind where you just... Um, cover it with wire, right? Let's see. Interesting but useless design of sushi belt? We'll see about that. It's a cargo wagon. Okay. We've got science. And I guess they're going to limit the chest. Yep. And then... Is this what I think it is? Is the train going to go back and forth? No? They're not adding any rail. I didn't know how that would work anyway with the... Um... Okay... So we're setting all of these to... This is just to make sure it doesn't like overflow something, I guess. It 
that's a pretty clever design. Oh, you're going to set the filters? Huh? It's going to use a clock from the spinny belt. That's cool, and I would not call it useless. Read belt contents hold. Everything, oh yeah, that's so that it's, that's good. So, isn't it just going to keep going until it fills up, though? Oh, it all goes back into the storage. Fair enough. Yep, that'll do. That's pretty cool. Love it. 10 out of 10. Alright, what do we got going on over here? Um, the U-238 is... Well, it's actually... This is actually working as... Uh, not exactly a balanced loader, but a, a kind of priority system, I guess. We're, we've run out of uranium again, that's the real problem. Okay, so let's suppose we have our output station down here. And here, may as well pick this up now. Hope I don't run out of inventory space. I think we're going to be fine. And at this one. What is going on with all these trains? They're all waiting for their turn. You're kidding me. Is this a... Is this a gridlock? This one's trying to go here. So is this one. Those... This one... Oh, this one hasn't left. There's your problem. I personally like the Blood Belt mod for Sushi Belts. It makes the weird belts look nicer. Blood Belt. Uh, let me just jump over here and fix this train system. I'm 90% sure that this is the entire reason that half of our trains have stopped. Um, also... Oh, this is... Yep, yep, yep. This is my fault. I didn't rebalance this earlier. And I should probably rebalance it again once the train leaves. I did actually say earlier um, that this could happen. There we go. And then... This one. And it looks like all of our trains are in motion. A podcast about engin engineering disasters with slides. Yes, indeed. Rebalance the stone in chests from taking to pave the planet. Yep. And the thing is, I predicted this, but... Oh. 
Uh, I think we forgot some signals. We need the maximum train length. Uh, just like this. Or well, minimum train length is more important. Since we don't have any bigger trains than six. I guess this station down here has the same issue. Not anymore. Uh, this one is correct. And this one is not. I don't know if this one matters because I don't think there are any pickups for Vulcanite blocks that um, that are usable by small trains. Okay, let's copy paste all of this and make sure we've got all the same settings down here. Are you aiming at some specific SPM? No, not really. Okay, back to... Well, actually, let me just dump all of this stuff in my chests right now. Uh, chests? Inventory. And while that happens, I'm going to take a short break. Be right back. I heard that naughty boy is here. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It occurs to me that the reason it took a while for the uranium train to arrive is because there weren't many trains available because they were all stuck. Does this have two trains coming in? Or is that one going home? It's going home. Okay. Where are we? I might need some... of these. Whoa. Apparently we've got no centrifuge. Oh, I've already got them. But still. Lol, well, hi. Love this game, but find it hard to get started. Uh, it can definitely... Oh, I think I lost some bots. The start can definitely be a bit slow sometimes. Or do you just mean figuring it out? Um, we also need iron for this one. In fact, this is the entire reason that we brought iron over here. On 
one, two, three, four. Maybe I'll do something different with the substation here. Or maybe that's the neatest way to do it. Figuring everything out. Well, you learn it all one little piece at a time. Um, since we've already got two belts uh, coming off of a splitter, why don't we do it this way? Even veteran players don't know it all. That's right. Kappa Votes knows. Welcome, Kappa Votes. Hope you're doing well. JD Plays on YouTube has some great tutorials that are targeted to new players. Nice. I've spent about 150 hours. Start a game, delete, and redo. That's valid. Okay. Uh, I'll copy these. Wait, is that... Never mind. I'll copy these to get started. Just so we know where the train stop goes, at least. And then we need... Train goes out, train comes in, and on the other side, train goes out. And train comes in. Design a starter base blueprint. Oh yeah, you can... It takes a lot of work to make a good one of those. But you could definitely make your future games start quicker that way. All welcome here and to the game. Absolutely. Okay, um, I'm not going to bother with the output for this one just yet. We don't even have any 235 anyway. It's all... Cover X is still accelerating. But I like what I'm seeing with the Uranium 235. I think this is probably going to work pretty well. Okay, so over on this side, we're going to have uh, rocket fuel turned into nuclear fuel. How quickly does that happen? Um, can we do... Nuclear fuel, where are you? Wait, do I not have nuclear fuel? Surely I do. Have we not researched it? No, there it is. Okay, so what is it called? Nuclear fuel. Nuclear... Okay, there it is, under manufacturing. Oh, it's the wrong type of machine, that's why. Made in centrifuge. Derp. And we can productivity module it. Fantastic. Okay, do I want to do the rocket fuel drop-off up here? Or maybe this could be both a drop-off and a pickup. Those can... they can be messy. Um, they are a little bit difficult. I don't think I'm going to make a mistake with it or, like, get confused and not know how to fix it or anything. But it is just a bit more of a pain. So I think what we'll do here is... whoops. Is just... Dual pickup. I mean drop off. Which is much easier. There's pretty much no way to mess this up. 
and we'll do the uh, combinatorless left, no, right, combinatorless right, except this will go somewhere else. I don't think we're going to have room for... Oh. That, that's a problem. Hmm. I could have sworn I've done this before somewhere. Did I have to... move the, um, signal to make this happen? I think I've only got it in a sandbox game somewhere, or something like that. Uh, actually, let's figure out exactly how much we're going to need first. So, four of these. And like so. And beacon. Alright, what's our rate? 0.2 solid rocket fuel per second. I think we're going to make more of these machines. 619 hours in game and I'm still a new player. Guy whose base was showing off had 13k hours. Had the same. Launched 2.2 million satellites. Jeez. No fan of starter-based blueprint. I like the fiddling before the real fun starts. The only thing about a starter-based blueprint is... Uh, well, one of the things is, as well, you'd better hope... Uh, you'd better be playing peaceful or something. Um, because one of the main reasons that this is such nasty spaghetti is... We were under pressure from the biters. Um, okay, how many... How many of these can we make? Whoops. That might be going a bit far. Then again, I might like the way the layout fits uh, the same everywhere. Can we... nope. Okay, whatever. Um, if all of these are active, we're still looking at just 1.1342 nuclear fuel per second. Um, but that is an entire stack. 1.1342. I mean, one is an entire stack. How fast can we make rocket fuel? Oh, are we only making it up here? How fast is this? 9.92 per second, so we're very much... That's a lot of fuel machines? Not enough. <laughs> My longest map is over 700 hours, and I launched over 70,000 rockets. Wow. Over 6,000 hours, still learning new things on new maps. First game took me 40 hours, I tried to copy from memory, saw on stream, second game took 160, wanted to try and explore everything, that was five years ago. Yeah, I mean, even, even streaming this every day, or nearly every day, um, I'm still learning things all the time, after having played this game on and off for years. Alright, so this is up to 1.13. Uh, nuclear fuel per second. I think that is all that we'll ever need. We could definitely support the rocket fuel for that, assuming we don't run out of light oil. 505. Why do we only have... Why do we only have 505 rocket fuel here? Oh, there's no water. Did I break something? 
water, water. Oh, I never connected that one up. Okay, that's fine. Heavy fuel is full. Uh, I think I found the problem. It may be the case that without water, you cannot crack heavy oil to light oil. Um, whoops, way too far. We're about to find out if we need to add the beacons to uh, this layer right here. Fortunately, this fix is pretty straightforward. This part's going to be part of the blueprint no matter what. And how rapidly are we cracking heavy oil here? 64 per second. At peak production, we make 148 heavy oil per second. Hmm. Maybe we do need the beacons. Because currently we're bottlenecking on making room for heavy oil for the oil refineries. Okay, I can't remember how I managed to fit... Here it is. Beacon goes on the right side of these ones. Um, we're going to have to completely change the way our medium poles are over here. That one's just not going to get a beacon, I guess. I wonder if I should remove it, and then we could make room for the water to come straight in over this way. Yeah, probably. Okay, so this goes here. That's not going to... Those two don't reach each other, do they? Give me that cable. Doesn't reach. How... How far does that go? Nope. I could put the medium pole here, but that doesn't reach either. And now that wire is wrong. Okay, I think we'll just get rid of the medium poles. Add the beacons. Uh, maybe remove this one. And we can move all of this stuff in a bit? Question mark? Why is this one connected to? Oh, I was standing in the way. Okay, cool. Don't love the way that looks on the map now. But we'll live with it. All right, so that goes there, and so on. We still wouldn't be able to link this one up like so. Hey, Stunner Alpha. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Hope you're doing well. How was your stream? I love how over-engineered everything in this base is. Yes. Definitely. Hello, sure thing. It's good. Good to hear. Um, okay, so how are we getting water to these pipes? Oh. But, um. Oh, I see. That's fine. That works. Either way. Okay. So we're going to do it like so. 
I might move this over a little bit. I can't. Yes, I can. I feel, I feel like this is going to look better. And then... Just have to add the power poles. It's going to mess everything up at first. Oh, I almost forgot the beacons for some of these. Beacon, beacon, beacon. Beacon. Beacon, beacon. All of them, actually. Playing through my first death world with a friend. First death world is always fun. Yes, indeed. Nobody's raiding you. This is just your imagination. Uh, good to know. Thank you. That doesn't reach, does it? No. Okay, so... I think this has to go here, has to go here, and so on. We're going to have to remove a whole lot of wires to make the power switch control uh, correct. And then... That's slightly upsetting. I wonder if we can tuck these in just a little bit more. That should be fine. Okay. Uh, navigation mode so that I can fly around and remove all of these extra wires. And let's check the map. That looks pretty good. By the way, new players, when the first tutorial scenario was added to the game, most veterans failed it. Rip. Oh, and we could definitely reduce the combinator count here by one. This is an old design. But I'll leave it for now, for old time's sake. Uh, so we need to go and get a couple more beacons to finish this properly. I do want to do that right now because I need to see the rate. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to crack heavy oil a lot more quickly than it's being made. That shouldn't be a problem. I remember being so confused. Always. And... So we're getting a trickle of resources again. But we can definitely improve things a little bit. We're still very full on heavy oil and it's uh, bottlenecking our oil refineries even though there's plenty of input. Okay. I think we've got enough for now. Let's head back. Oh. I was going to say, can we go a little faster? The answer is no. And there go our beacons. Alright, rate calculator. We can crack heavy oil way faster than we make it. I think we'll just leave that as is, that's fine. And it's all on a power switch, so it doesn't even matter the extra power usage here. Okay. I feel like we could make that a little tidier. Looks a bit better. So we're making... We're using 720 light oil per second. If... We're going full speed. So we could do that, theoretically, 
if we're making nothing else but rocket, uh, rocket fuel here at some point, we could go full speed. So currently slowly gaining light oil. Fantastic. Look at that. We've got, we've just got nothing but heavy oil. All of the petroleum just disappeared and we're basically empty on light still. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a mistake to have beacons for all of these crackers. What did we... What were we doing before we got pulled over here? Oh, that's right. I wanted to check that we had the rocket fuel so that we can make the nuclear fuel. I haven't actually seen it getting produced just yet, but it should be fine. And then... Hmm. The way I've laid this out, I can't really... Can't really fit it. Oh, we're getting uranium-238 all the way back here. That's good. Coverex is doing three machines now. That's good. Does it matter if we put the 238 all the way over here? I think it kind of does. But I have an idea. Uranium and rocket fuel. Nah, it feels... it feels bad. We could have some of the 238 go all the way back here, just to come down this way with the rocket fuel. We could have the rocket fuel dropped off on this side and come in this way. And then spaghetti intensifies. I don't like that either. Hmm. I guess we'll just do it this way. Um, uranium 235. And same thing over here. And we'll end up with a bit of 238 st uh, stuck there forever. But what are you going to do? Actually, we could probably... No, we couldn't. Okay, fine. Just do it like this. And like this. Rocket fuel will come in this way. Blueprint, snap to grid, relative, hold shift. And there we go. And obviously, we're going to need an output belt. So this one goes this way. This one goes this way. Actually, if we're going to do that. Why don't we be consistent? Snap to grid, relative, and go. Wait, did that just... Hold on, I want to check this. Did that just do what I thought it did? No, it doesn't. I must have 
used the deconstruction planner before. That would have been surprising, very useful, and also dangerous. Okay. Substations. Can we just put them over here? I do wish I could line this up the same. Maybe there's a way if I move this one over. Substation goes here. And then there's no room for this over here. Okay, never mind. Let's just do it like this, I guess. Could be worse. I've seen worse looking builds. Okay. Rocket fuel. Wait, how much rocket fuel do we need maximum here? Uh, less than one. Okay, I don't think we need the two blue belts coming out of this one. I think we'll be okay. Uh, balanced unloader. One thing that I forgot to make a blueprint for that's actually useful surprisingly often is outputting this to just one belt, although I would have had to alter it here anyway. If I want to be cheeky, I could do this belt coming down here, but I think this would look a little bit better. Okay, and then like so. Actually, I think I already had this. I could have copy-pasted it. Yeah, here it is. Rip. Okay, so we need a rocket fuel belt here. And here. Actually, I don't want to make that look like it's part of this build. If that makes sense. That doesn't really line up where I would like, but I guess it's okay. Hmm, that looks kind of wrong. Let's do this. And here comes more uranium. Fantastic. Okay, so our output is going to go down here. Um, probably don't need a four cargo wagon train or nuclear fuel. I think we'll be okay without four cargo wagons. So this one's going to be... Uh, nuclear fuel pickup, and why don't we make it green? And 
balance load this. Do we really need stack in stack inserters won't actually do anything with nuclear fuel, right? Because you can't stack them. Alright, let's get a request set up for our rocket fuel. Hopefully it'll be here sooner than we might otherwise expect. I feel like that's going to look wrong no matter where I put it. This is fine. Uh, let's see. Yellow. 1600. That's how much fits in a train. And then uh, we need to, well, this has to change to uranium because we are going to connect these wires up here. This is a rocket fuel. And then I don't remember how I did this. Oh, that's right. I'm going to get rid of the prioritization system. It doesn't seem to accomplish that much. Uh, green wire just goes straight to LTN train stop. And this one comes down here. And that should be that. What do we got train wise? Picking up some more uranium. Rocket fuel, we have 505 still. That is not what we're looking for. Um, we are accumulating light oil, but maybe I should set it up so that rocket fuel isn't like a low priority. Um, the way I've got it set up at the moment is if rocket fuel is greater than if rocket fuel is more than half full um we'll make if light oil rather is half full we'll make rocket fuel as it stands it's gonna take a little while to get there i could always make another one of these though might be a good idea. What else uses light oil here besides cracking? I think literally nothing. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll just get rid of that condition. Except... Maybe we don't want a pump uh, pushing the light oil specifically to solid rocket fuel. This is only 720 per second. Um, I think we probably just want to do this. Let's head over there. The only places light oil goes is to a train and to cracking to make petroleum. So I think I would like to make some rocket fuel today. It is going to drain our light oil pretty quickly, I think. Although, okay, we've got like How much exactly do we have? A 
132,000 light oil. It's going to take more than two minutes to drain. And that's without considering the rate of attrition where we're making light oil as quickly as we can. This one is backed up still? Oh, crude oil is running out. Uh-oh. Um, do we have an oil train on the way? I hope so. Yes, we do. Maybe some more storage for crude oil would be a good idea. Like, we could literally have a tank or two for almost every uh, refinery here. We just increased it by 50%. doesn't look as good. May as well. Uh, if we... If we move this pump, we could fit this one as well. That would be a lot more consistent looking. Where would the connection go if we do that? Oh, I like this one actually. Probably. Yeah, that should be fine. Pump goes here. And pipe goes here. Be gone, pump. That looks way more consistent. Could we perhaps put these over here and still have I don't really think we need this pump. We'll see. What? Oh. Can't quite fit that there. Hmm. It looks inconsistent because of the substation here. Do this. And then water would have no way to connect both here and here. Unless I move that light, which I'm not going to do. Oh, I could move all of these lights down a little bit. That might be okay. That might be very okay. Yeah, I think I like that. So then, uh, water pipe goes this way. Oh. And that is a lot of storage for crude oil. Let's just double check everything on this side. Yeah, it's all getting pumped away. That's good. Okay, so we've got our uh, rocket fuel. We currently have 875. That is like almost 400 more than before. And we're heading towards um, 
getting a train load relatively quickly. It doesn't seem like we're bottlenecked on this anymore. I see we're struggling. Maybe I should put a pump here. We seem to be struggling to... Oh, it's probably because we're cracking from light to petroleum. Yeah. So maximum light oil is 781 per second. Cracking to petroleum uses more than half of that easily. And we need almost all of it to make uh, light oil, uh, rocket fuel at full speed. I think you missed an underground water pipe. Whereabouts? Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm surprised the... Oh, I think it's getting water from over this side as well. Yeah. We can get rid of this part now. Although, I remember why I did that now, actually. Whoops. Uh, why don't we just do it this way? There we go. Whoops, don't land on the tracks. Is this still the only place? No, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Okay, let's get rid of this ugly bit of piping. Connect this one this way. And get rid of this one, I guess. That's going to be a lot easier to remove the extra bits when we're placing a blueprint. Oh, copy pasting this. Okay. Rocket fuel is still trickling in. We're up to a thousand, actually. That's really good. So it shouldn't be long before we're making nuclear fuel. Speaking of making things, I wonder how our scaffolding is going. We're still loading it. 37,000. That is going to take quite a while. But going up to orbit with 50,000 scaffolding, um, hopefully we're not going to need any more for a while. So this is a rocket fuel. Come down here. And that should be suitable. We're going to need a train station to pick up the nuclear fuel. And... I don't really think I need to bother with a display for this one or anything. Although I kind of would like to be able to count how many we've got by mousing over a combinator, so why not? Arithmetic combinator. And I need to copy paste some of these lights. If I can find them. There we go. Uh, nuclear fuel. Divided by what? 40? Yeah, 40 would be one train load. Output 
green light. Use colors. Hey. And then this is just going to go straight to the train stop input. Hmm, excuse me. Uh, minimum, maximum train length is three. This is a small train station. One train at a time, please. And I wonder if I should... I'm just going to default to only bringing a train when there's enough to fill it. Okay. I also would like to incidentally refuel the train here, but well, no, there's no need. So what we're going to do with our next depot design is have a drop-off for fuel, and we'll prioritize giving the trains nuclear fuel, but also uh, it'll accept rocket fuel as well, just in case we run out. And we'll have to design that for large trains as well as small. Or maybe we could do a depot. Um, that's uh, something that might be a bit of a challenge that I haven't gotten around to trying yet. Is a, uh, a depot that can do different train sizes. It's going to need to read the information about the train to see where the locomotives are to decide which inserters are allowed to put in fuel. I can't I don't think I can do both cargo wagons and fluid wagons in the same spot because uh, as long as we're going to have a system that will drain fluid wagons if they go back to base, um, we're probably going to have to have this system. We do have plenty of room for more fluid wagons just with this one depot though. But for cargo wagons, we could probably figure something out. I kind of want to try designing it right now, actually. And just for bonus points, let's maybe fit it. We'll see how it fits inside one of these uh, existing blocks. I don't think it's necessarily going to take up so much space that I'll use a block for it. We'll see. I need a lot more rail, especially to make the depot. I think we'll be able to do one with radial symmetry because of the way we set up this rail block. Um, it actually, no matter how you rotate it, is exactly the same. Okay. Have to get more rail. Always at purple science.
many bots picking up uh, logistic trash. These little blueprints get created whenever I copy paste something and then jetpack. Uh, because basically every time you activate or deactivate the jetpack, technically you die. And I think it's probably a vanilla Factorio behavior that if you're trying to copy something and you get killed, it'll just place a blueprint in your inventory. Oh, don't need that. Let's go. Uh, another bonus from doing this right now is if we make a nice uh, depot here, the trains won't have as far to go, I think. Okay. So, if we want symmetry... We could either do half and half, or we need like four quarters, which I think is going to be a lot more difficult, but it might look really cool. I think it completes the action, which ends up making a blueprint. I would guess it would mark for decon too. Oh, let's find out. Mark for decon. Jetpack. Mm, doesn't seem to do that. Okay. Wait, are my butts asleep? Did I leave some behind? Why are they not placing this? How many bots do I have right now? 48. So, yep, there they are. Two of them. Oh, and I forgot the jetpack is also a good way to kind of reset your bot behavior. Alright, so what if we have something like this? I want to make sure that we can do this in O. I think that's going to look too much like something if I try to do that. Maybe we'll just do uh, a mirror. So we could probably fit a ton of trains in one of these. Let's suppose we start like this. And... down this side, something similar. Whoops. Is that going to line up the same? Yep. I don't suppose... Is that going to work with the signals, or it is not? So this has to go here. How many trains can we fit this way? Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five... Six, I think that's going past the middle. That isn't looking too good. What if we had them, like, alternating or something? No, I don't think I like that very much. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Versus... That's no good. Could we maybe... 
if we remove some of these signals, we could make an exception and... I don't know if it would make that much difference. This would have to... Like this or something? Can I not... There we go. Can I not pick this up? There we go. So would that be in the middle? No, that's a little bit past the middle as well. Hmm. What if we do them lengthways? That'd be a, a lot more train to look at that way as well. So... If our train stops are all like this, how will the trains get in and out? I guess it would be this way. Aren't we going to run into the exact same problem with this? We're not going to be able to fit... Um, like twice as many trains, basically. Hmm. So this goes here. Uh, we'll find the middle. One, two, three, four, five. That's the middle. Train stop go here. And one, two, three, four, five. Six. Maybe this would be okay. I don't think this is going to be okay. If the train is sticking out over there, the locomotive wouldn't stick out too far, but. Let's do this. Okay, so the one, two, three, four, five. Actually, it does stick out too far. Even if the train stop goes all the way over here. And that wouldn't work. Damn these long trains. Um. If I don't have the entrance and exit like so, and we do it something like this, we'd have to change all the signaling around here, probably. Uh, might be worth it. Say if you had rate calc tool, it would open that window. Uh, let's find out that one as well. Uh, where's something we can rate calc? Jetpack, rate calc, unjetpack. Nope. There's something special about dying while you're trying to make a blueprint. Actually, probably try that in vanilla and see what happens. Oh, this doesn't quite work either. I mean, we could, but the locomotive at the end would be slightly at an angle. Um, I don't think I like that very much. So, I guess... I guess we have to give in and just... have only one train. Uh, or maybe I just won't use... The inside of a rail block for this. Maybe that makes a whole lot more sense. 
we could do it so that um could we though not like this but So this train stopping in from that side, this train stopping in from that side. And you could have... You could not have something... You could kind of have something feeding fuel in like this. I don't think I like that very much. Hey, Dune. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream? I mean, after I dropped by. Uh, unfortunately, we will be wrapping up relatively soon. Um, but I'm sure we can find someone to raid. Uh, currently, just trying to figure out the layout of... I would like to do a really nice depot in the middle of one of these uh, rail blocks. But I think because of the six car trains, it's not going to work out that well. I'm Steelis. Steelis. Okay, I think I'll maybe not spend the last five minutes uh, staring at making rail fit. Why don't we check on our Omni Smelter? Still making... Oh, it did get to... This one did fill out all of the stone. That's fantastic. So now we're doing copper. Uh, we've got a severe shortage of iron still. Glass is... Hmm... I might consider adding a circuit for the glass that checks, like, maybe just this chest right here. Like, if there's no sand, we'll stop making glass, because it's just going to be really slow. On the other hand, if glass ends up being the last thing that we're making, um, that would cause the whole system to stop. Yeah, steel is and has been a problem, even though I keep making more. Oh, that's right, you needed like 17,000 belts of steel uh, for the builds that you were working on, right? Uh, looks like our core mining system is working just fine. Um, we do need to improve our delivery cannon system for deleting excess resources. What I want to do is double or triple the number of cannons here and instead of having them set to specific resources um, we'll use uh, crafting combinators to change what they're destroying. Yeah, purple science gobbles it up. Yes indeed. Purple sci uh, science gobbles rail like crazy. Um, even this little thing. Well, hang on. I haven't actually beaconed this up. This is really old, and this was updated a bit. Uh, five point nine four. This requires a full blue belt of rail, just with speed, uh, just with speed three beacons and. Uh, tier 3, oh, oh, it produces those, uh, tier 3 productivity modules. A little bit less than 6 production science packs per second, and it wants a full belt of rail. Fun. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, there's plenty of room to expand this. The only thing I don't like about this design is, frankly, we don't have enough delivery cannons. Um, we need to be deleting that copper and stone more quickly. 
And I would like to have all of the input resources just go to a common feed. And we'll use uh, some filters, circuitry, whatever, to uh, to control what we're destroying. We'll probably use a max function. So whatever resource we've got the most of here, we'll focus on destroying that first. Um, but yeah, that'll be for tomorrow. 64 core miners are still going strong. Can you consume a lot of stone to turn them into something else? Maybe make big rocks or something. Do you mean like, I can't think of a good example, but for uh, an example would be if you smelted stone brick and then destroyed that. That would obviously be a tremendous waste of energy in the case of stone break. Landfill uses 20 stone each. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I checked this actually. Um, I think we had this idea and we wanted to, we wanted to use the um, cannons to shoot landfill. And landfill is not included. Unfortunate. That would be by far the best way to get rid of stone. Could do sand? Question mark. Uh, what does sand take? One stone makes two sand. Except stone stacks to 50. And sand stacks to 200, which is four times as much for two times the stone and it takes very few machines uh, to make sand you can productivity module it but this would be one instance where we don't want to do that uh, delivery cannon 200 sand or 50 stone I suppose it would be worth turning it into sand. Uh, very, very easy to do. Five sand per second consumes 2.5 stone. And the stack size is effectively double. Is there a big rock recipe? Not to my knowledge. Big rock. Rock. What mod lets you do that? Um, but yeah, that is that is a really good idea. Thanks for thanks for suggesting that. I think I'll I think I'll incorporate that one. Uh, I don't suppose. Oh, I think uh, you probably can't destroy it with the cannon. But there's like recipes to make landfill that include copper or iron, I think, except you need to use the um, recycler, I think it is. But yeah, we wouldn't be able to destroy it with a cannon. That is not a recycler. Um, here's our recycler. 100 scrap, 25 iridite, hold on it. Yeah, there it is. 50 iron or 50 copper can make one landfill. But then you've got the landfill that you can't delete. It does stack a hell of a lot better, though. Have bots replaced the chest slash destroyed belts? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought of it. Because, because we've got this system where... The cannons fire on a timer. We could have them destroy chests. I can't believe I'm saying that like it's a good thing, but it kind of is. We could use iron chests. That'd be um, 
you know, a lot easier. Don't really want to use steel on that. You could also make them fire if the chest is full. That is a good idea. That's a really good idea. I like where this is going. Okay, I, th I think I'm going to play with this for the next stream. Those are some great ideas. Thanks, Baker. Make a wall of chests, yep. If you have biters, put requester chests. <laughs> Requesting stone outside your walls. <laughs> Comrade biters doing my work for me. Such that biters then destroy them. Fill the chest with iron slash copper slash stone. And excess goes to cannons, which then fire at the chests. Yeah, and if you're just dumping whatever in the chests, you don't have to worry about some kind of, you know, clever filter and setting recipes and stuff. We could probably just always use stone to make the, um, to make the cannon... Uh, to make the cannon fire, that is. Uh, Europo 77 alts, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so now we've got those bright ideas. Uh, why don't we see who else is streaming today? I think yesterday I said I'd like to give some random small person a go. Unless I see... A familiar small person first. Well, small streamer, not small person. That is Deutsch. That is a Russian. There's a lot of multilingual stuff with Factorio. Alright, let's have a quick look at this one, shall we? That's a good start. Okay, let's maybe give this person a go. Now that I've thought of that, I think I'll do that in my own SE playthrough. I have too much stone and coal mostly. Nice. We're going to invent the gold standard for arbitrary, well, not so arbitrary resource destruction. All right, let's get going, shall we? Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Uh, same time tomorrow for more space exploration. And why don't we surprise this person that we're raiding who just went to get some water with a decent sized raid. Let's go. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. See you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have questions or if you find anything broken or have requests, by all means let me know. And I'll see you next time. Always a pleasure to learn more circuit stuffs. Nice. Let's go.